Hello, and welcome to our radio drama presentation of William Shakespeare's The Empire Striketh Back, Star Wars Part the Fifth by Ian Dosher. This is a live performance, and the cast have had no rehearsals together, so there may be occasional stumbles in the dialogue. We're expecting to have a lot of fun, and hope you will too. This script was originally written with stage performances in mind, so narration is in the form of stage directions. In addition, as with many of Shakespeare's works, characters sometimes have asides. An aside is a line spoken so the audience can hear, but the other characters on stage cannot. Any instances where characters have asides will be indicated via narration. And now, please enjoy The Empire Striketh Back. O oh, tis for the rebellion a dark time, for though they have the Death Star all destroyed, Imperial troops did from the ashes climb, and push the rebels closer to the void. Across the galaxy pursued with speed, the rebels flee the Imperial Starfleet vast. A group with Luke Skywalker in the lead hath to the ice world known as Hoth flown fast. Meanwhile, the cruel Darth Vader is obsessed with finding young Skywalker. Thus he hath, through every point of space, begun his quest by sending robot probes to aid his wrath. In time so long ago begins our play in war-torn galaxy far, far away. Scene 1. The Ice World of Hoth. Enter Luke Skywalker. If flurries be the food of quests, snow on. Be like upon this hoth, this barren rock, my next adventure waits. Tis time shall tell. And yet, is it adventure that I seek? Shall danger, fear, and action fill my days? Shall all my life be spent in keen pursuit of great adventure and her fickle fame? It seemeth I had had enough of life to fill a thousand normal human lives. A princess in a vision spake to me, my aunt and uncle by stormtroopers slain. A hasty flight from my home, Tatooine, a pilot and a Wookiee and a knight, a rescue brave within our cruel foe's grasp my teacher killed and then the final scene the death star battle many friends were lost but in the end a greater war was won adventure hath both taken from my life and given to me everything i have and thus i seek and shun its tempting ways in now adventure knocks upon the door a flaming orb hath struck the ground nearby is it a portent of some ill to come? Luke speaks into his comlink. To Echo 3 to Echo 7. Han, my true companion heir, canst thou hear me? Aye, truly, Chuck. Thy voice rings loud and clear. What can I do for thee, my noble friend? My circle round the area hath been completed now, but not of life nor forms of life my scan hath yet uncovered. Nay. Hey. <clears throat> There's not life enough on this cube of ice to fill an empty star cruiser. The sensors that I've put in place, so shall I now return unto the base. Tis well. And I, forsooth, shall soon meet with thee there. But I have spied a meteorite that hath its landing made near here. So shall I go and fix my eyes upon the scene. I'll not be long, I warrant. Then I shall return. Enter Wampa. Aside. You viewers all, whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest womp rat creeping on the floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here, when Wampa rough in wildest rage doth roar. Pray know that I, a Wampa, simple am, and take no pleasure in my angry mood. Though with great force this young one's face I slam, I prithee know I strike but for my food. Alas, is this the adventure I am due? To die upon a vicious monster's whim? I am attacked by this awful beast. O oh, fate most wretched, shall I be his feast? Exit, pursued by a wampa. Scene 2. The rebel base on Hoth. 
Enter Han Solo. A scoundrel may not rise above his place. This is a fact that the galaxy doth, doth teach. For in thou I have joined rebellion's ranks. These many weeks and months, and gained respect with their noble band, my scoundrel past doth make his harsh demands upon my life. The bounty hunters sent by Jabba make pursuit to win the price upon my head. So must I go once more unto the depths of my old life, find Jabba of the hut, and pay his ransom, thus to free my soul. I will not I would not leave my noble rebel friends. I would not leave the cause for which they fight. I would not leave the princess and her charm. I would not leave all these, and yet I must. A life's not well lived under threat of death, especially with men of cruel intent. For who for a price shall fill the hut's demands upon the trail of my indebtedness? And so my mate Chewbacca and I leave upon the instant that the ship is set to go. I say Chewbacca, ho! Hi, Chewie! Enter Chewbacca, working on the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> Lose not thy temper, gentle Wookiee. Nay, but practice patience. I shall help thee soon. <laughs> Exit Chewbacca. Han crosses to command center with Princess Leia and General Riken. Solo, wouldst thou speak with me? Good general. The sensors are in place. And surely shalt thou know if aught comes near our hidden station here. Well, for thee sake, Commander Skywalker, hath he yet made report? Nay, truly. He hath gone to see a meteorite that hath made landfall near here. If all the meteorites have fallen in the system, I believe we shall have pains and trouble in detecting approaching ships. Han, aside. How shall I tell my news most difficult, and crush this man's great hopes for what's ahead? Fear not, O oh heart, but be direct and calm. Tis best approach straight on, like the Kessel Run. Riken. My general, I cannot stay. I must. Make haste and get me hence, in now. Leia, aside. Alack, how like death Neil sounds this news to me. Tell thee truly when I say to thee, this news doth break this general's gentle soul. Could not be more sorry, pilot brave. A price still lies upon my head, and if I do not make amends with Jabba, I shall not repay with money, nay, but life. Price too near, dear indeed. Deathmark is no kind companion to a free man's life. Thou art a warrior noble, Solo, and I hate to lose thee. And thou art a kind, good general, Sirrah. I hate to go. Exit Riken. Han turns to Princess Leia. So, your highness, great. This is the end. Tis so. I prithee mourn me not, show no sentiment. Farewell, thou princess cold. On, aside. I go, and hope she follow upon, hard upon. For if she shall not follow, all is lost. Han Solo begins to exit, pursued by Princess Leia. Han, halt! What is thy pleasure, highness? I did believe that thou had chosen to stay. The bounty hunter we met on Ord, Mantell, hath changed my mind. We need thee, Han. What we? We speaketh thou of we. Dost thou in royal terms speak here of we? Hast thou a rodent in thy pocket, such that thou and he are we? What minst thou? What need is there that thou, thou share with all? Speak not of we, but I, O princess. What dost thou most need? Not we, not they, but thou. I know not what thou speakest of. Tis true. Most probably dost thou not know thyself. And what, pray tell, precisely should I know? Of what great mystery am I unaware? Hast, hast thou the depths of Leia plumbed and seen what lies within my soul, my very core? Be not elusive, nay. Thou wast that I should stay because of how thou feels in thy heart about me. Need hath turned to want. Pray tell me not thy needs, but thy desires. Thou art a leader full of skill, tis true. Thine answer leadeth thee astray. Let's fly. I see it in thine aspect now. Let's fly. Tell me the answer true. Thy vanity 
have puffed up thine Im imagination. Aye, then why dost that yet follow me? Weren't thou afraid I would depart without a kiss? I would as eagerly kiss Wookie lips. <laughs> that could be arranged. By heaven's breath, a kiss would suit thee well. Exit Han Solo. Oh, man of bile, thou wouldst make the coolest temper burn, for thou art made of heat and flame and fire. No wood may stand within a mile of thee, but it shall roast as if twere on the sun, and now thy scorting manner lights my fuse. I, truly, I confess I am a flame. Thine eyes create combustion in my heart. Thy face doth create my cheeks to flood with warmth. Thy fingers set me trembling for touch. Thy hands may hold the secrets of my soul. Thou hast the power or Orlea very self. Yet where my patience past where I can bear. For, oh, how thou dost needle, jest, and prick. When thou dost think thy pride is at stake. Be not so full of bile, my noble Han. I prithee, choose the tender side of wit. If thou couldst ever put thy pride away, be like my prejudice would fall aside. Then could our two hearts sing in a melody instead of clashing in disharmony. Exit Princess Leia. Scene 3. The Rebel Base on Hoth. Enter C-3PO and R2-D2 with Han Solo and Chewbacca at the Millennium Falcon. Too. Thou dost ever plague me so. E'en now we have been in dishonor sent away from our good princess's chamber. Fie! Such breach of etiquette and protocol, and all the fault doth on thy shoulders lie. <coughs> Not thy blame upon my shoulders, droid. I did at no point ask thee to engage the thermal heater. "'Twas but a remark upon the coldness of the princess's room. <coughs> "'Freezing it should be. "'And now how shall we dry off all her clothes? "'I truly know not how. Beep, 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 beep. "'Oh, switch off!' C-3PO walks toward the Millennium Falcon. R2-D2 aside. Watch thy tongue, thou naughty droid, or I shall bring my wit to bear on thee, and thou shalt not escape my shocks and jabs. For though I speak aloud in beeps and squeaks, within my mind a keener tongue prevails. And though thou, like a brother, art to me, I'll happily correct your errant ways. If thou didst think the thermal heater was too hot, then thou shalt surely not endure the fire that I shall kindle with my wit. C-3PO makes his way to Han Solo. Han to Chewbacca. Why hast thou taken this apart when I'm striving to depart this wretched place? Excuse me, sir. Pray mend the ship and swift. Please, sir, a word with thee. What does thou want? Tis Princess Leia, sir. She strives to reach thee on the communicator. And t'was wise that I did turn it off, for I have no desire to speak with her. I see. But she hath after Master Luke made inquiry, for surely he hath not returned unto the base. She knows not where he is. In that, her mind and mine are one. I know not where he is. But no one knows his whereabouts. What does thou mean by no one, prating droid? Deck officer, deck officer! Enter, deck officer. Yes? Does thou know where Commander Skywalker is? I've not seen him, but tis possible. He threw the entrance to the south, returned. Tis possible? I pray thee, good lad, go thou thither and find out. It grows quite dark outside. Aye, sir. Exit, deck officer. Excuse me, sir, but may I ask what doth transpire? Thou mayst indeed. Oh, man, impossible! Come thou, R2, let us return unto the princess now. The drying of her clothes is now the least of all our worries, for another ill far greater than our mishap is afoot. In confidence I tell thee, I do fear that Master Luke grave danger doth confront. Exit C-3PO and R2-D2. What portent strange, what evil tidings this. My friend, by no one seen, the droid's afraid. Chewbacca prone to error with the ship. 
The young deck officer so tentative. These things foretell some ill that shall occur. But if misfortune toucheth anyone, let it be me, not my partner Luke. For he is like a brother unto me, and all who fight with me in battle are. Though I did save him in the Death Star clash, tis he that saved me from the smuggler's life by leading me on paths more true than I had erred seen. Now do I call him friends, and this rebellion is the cause we share. For all my friends here, I would not depart if it were not for, if it were not by Jabba hunted down. I, I would give my bones, my life, for great rebellion's sake, if e'er it were required. But now you know the officer returns. Enter deck officer. Good sir. Commander Skywalker hath not come in the entrance to the south. He may have but forgotten to check in. Nay, nay, his nature is not thus. Now tell me, are the speeders ready? Nay, we have not yet adapted them unto the cold of Hoth. So then upon a Tauntaun's back I'll ride, though with especial foulness they abuse my nose. They are the speediest we have. But sir, the temperature doth drop too fast for any living being to survive. Tis true, and by my dear friend doth bear the brunt, and shall not die while I have breath or while I have life or breath, for neither snow nor ice nor gloom of hoth shall stay my rescue of my greatest friend. Thy tauntaun shall be freeze ere thou canst ride. Unto our primary marker I predict. Then I shall dine with thee tonight in hell. Exeunt Han Solo, Chewbacca, and Deck Officer. Enter Luke Skywalker, hanging upside down from balcony. What Warren friends is this? I am within some icy shelter. Now do I recall. The creature large hath tamed me by surprise. Then quickly did my body overpower by knocking me aside with painful blow. It killed my tauntaun with its vicious claw. Unmoved by the creature's awful scream. It must have dragged us to this frozen lair. And now I hear it gnaw my tauntaun's flesh. The stench of musty death is in my nose. Now I'm awake. Hung up by my own feet. And sounds of tearing skin and crunching bone do echo through the monster's gloomy cave. The, the tauntaun, though is only the first dish. And I am bound to be the second course. Indeed, I have a problem grave. And how shall I make rescue for myself? But wait, what's there? A lying on the snow nearby. It is my lightsaber. How fortunate. Tis still too far to grasp with my own reach. Thus call I on the force to save my life. Oh, concentrate. And call upon the things thou learnst from Obi-Wan when he still lived. Forsooth, I feel the force begin to flow. Within, nearby, inside, surrounding me. O oh, force most strong, the lightsaber's at hand. Now am I free to flee the fierce beast's clutch. But lo, the creature comes to me anon. It will attack me in its fiery rage, unless I am the first to strike. Lay on! Enter Wampa. Luke cuts off the Wampa's arm and exits quickly. Alas, how I am by this man abused. Could I, for seeking food, not be excused? It seemeth that this Wampa shall have strife. Thus, gentles all, have pity on my life. Exit Wampa. Scene 4. The Rebel Base on Hoth. Enter C-3PO, R2-D2, Princess Leia, and Chewbacca. O oh, horrid interim of waiting, time that doth like snail unwittingly creep by. Full many hours have passed without a word of Master Luke or Captain Solo. Now the day grows late and whispered words of fear throughout the base are heard for these men's fate. It seems that all lose heart and think the worst, for how can even our bold Han Solo stand the harsh and unrelenting chill of Hoth? But now, no more. C-3PO, thou art not made to worry and to fret. Be brave. Come now, R2, there's no more we can do. Behold, my joints are freezing. Say not such things. 
of course we shall set eyes on Master Luke again. And he shall be in perfect health, thou impish little droid. In... Aye, he shall be in perfect health. R2-D2, aside. I fear this chill that doth e'en now my metal frame assault. Tis cold upon the core, tis cold. I fear unto the death. Bear up, droid soul, and listen to C-3PO's advice. Be you a helpful strength amid distress. Enter Lieutenant and Major Durlin. Sir, all patrols are in, but and still no sign from either Skywalker or Solo. Dread! My mistress Leia, R2 makes report he hath not yet any signals received. However, he admitted that his range is far too weak to give up every hope. Your Highness, I do fear there's nothing more that we may do tonight. The shield doors must be closed. I consent, but with a heart that breaketh even now. Major Durlin turns to the lieutenant. Aye, close the doors. Now our two doth report. The odds of their survival in the cold are 725 to 1. The shield doors close. <laughs> Though our twos want to make mistakes from time to time. Oh dear, oh dear. Exeunt Princess Leia, Chewbacca, Lieutenant, and Major Durlin. R2-D2 aside. Why did I speak? Oh, curse my beeping tongue. A helpful strength, I pledged that I would be. But now have I made these matters worse? For I have given our princess reason to be scared. Yet I do worry for my master's life, and though I would not cause undue distress, I fear that he may never make return. 2C3PO Hey, fear thou not, my silver friend. I'll warrant he shall surely be all right, for Master Luke is clever, young, and spry, even for a human being. So say I. Exeunt. Scene 5. The Ice World of Hoth. Enter Luke Skywalker. Oh, what torment have I just endured? For after my attack by creature cruel, I quickly made my exit from his lair and made my great escape amidst the snow. Far. Far I ran to find a refuge safe, yet too far from the rebel's base I've gone. And now my strength has left. I fail again. My body falls. Too weak to make its way. He falls. Enter ghost of Obi-Wan Kenobi. But now, in now, what vision comes to me? Luke. And? Attend to me, Luke. Thou shalt unto the system Dagobah go. Dagobah? There thou shalt learn the force from Yoda, I, the Jedi Master who instructed me. Exit, ghost of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ben, leave me not. Alas, I fall again. Luke collapses as Han enters and dismounts his tauntaun. Amid the burning snow and winter's bite, have I this journey tamed to find my friend. But lo, what is this sight that I now see? Tis Luke, collapsed. O oh, lad, be thou not dead. Give me some signs of life. I, Luke, live. The cold, hath, the cold of Hoth shall yet be warmth to me. If thou art still alive, come now, good friend. The Tauntaun falls over, frozen to death. Oh, Ben. Oh, Dagobah. Han takes Luke's lightsaber and cuts open the Tauntaun, pulling Luke close to its warmth. We've not much time. Stay with me, Luke. Tis true, this shall smell bad, but also shall it keep the warm until the shelter hath erected been. Oh, vile. These Tauntauns have an awful stench outside, but nothing did I know of her wretchedness disgusting rot and sickening filth till this new smell hath made upon my nose. On sits with Luke as night passes. The shelter now is fashioned by my hands, both strong and deft. We shall await the morn with only Tauntaun's guts as company. 
our guardian of nighttime travelers, be with me and my comrade Luke this eve. For we are merely pilgrims far from home and whom who wish to come again unto our mates. Now several anxious hours we've huddled here and with the morning downs the light of hope. My rebel friends shall surely make attempt to find where Luke and I have spent the night. Search well, my lads. The prize waits to be found. Enter Zev, aside, flying. The speeders have all been prepared, and now a, a proper search for Luke and Han begins. But what is this? Shall fortune be so kind? My sensors do report some life forms near. Mayhap the cherished find shall yet be mine. Pray listen, Echo Base, to my report. There's something here my scanner hath just found. Tis yet unsure, but may a life form be. Commander Skywalker, dost thou hear me? Tis rogue too. Oh, good Captain Solo, dost thou hear? Tis rogue too. Fine, good morning, lads. Twas nice of you to finally come around. Here, Echo Base, I say they have been found. Exeunt. Scene 6. The Rebel Base on Hoth. Enter Luke Skywalker, reclining on bed. Through hazy dreams I have vague memories of being taken to the rebel base and given the droid medic's greatest care. Now here I am, and not but scars remain. Thus is the creature's foul at least made fair. Enter C-3PO, R2-D2, and Princess Leia. Master Luke, my wires are filled with joy to see thee fully functional again. R2-D2, aside. Oh, that I too could speak aloud. To Luke. Oops. R2 expressed his relief as well. Enter Han Solo and Chewbacca. How goes it with thee, Chuck? Oh, verily, thou dost look well to me. In faith thou seem'st in strong enough, I warrant, to pull the ears from off at Gundark. Truly, thanks to thee. Now, thou dost owe me two good turns, my friend. Han turns to Leia. Indeed, your worship. Will have you conspired to keep me in this presence, in thy presence longer? See, twas not my doing. General Ryken doth believe that it is still too dangerous for any ship to leave the system. I. Even thy beloved Millennium Falcon, till the shield of act of energy is active. Ha! Cloth of fiction dost thou weave. Yet I have found that fatal error in thy stitch. For I believe thou wouldst not let a man so beautiful as I depart from thee. The only stitch I know is in my side. From laughing at thy pride most heartily, thou mayest attempt to needle at my heart, but I am swain of stronger thread than this, to say I would not let thee go. Pish, pish! I know not whence thy great delusions come, thou laser brain. <laughs> ah, laugh indeed, thou fuzzball large. But thou hast not seen us alone, I the passage south. Where did upon me unspool in full her feelings true of fondest love for me. My feelings? Oh, thou arrogant half-wit, thou oversized child, thou friend of slime, thou man of scruffy looks who hurtest nerves, thou foul-brained, wimpled, rough wind, wa waste of flesh. What scruffy? Scruffy? How? Who's scruffiness? How am I bescruffed? Han turns to Luke. Be like my words, were accurate and hit upon the mark, since now she hath her temper lost. True, Luke. Thus it is plain that till thou tamest thy tongue, no tongue of woman shalt thou comprehend. Leia kisses Luke at length, then exits. <laughs> An officer is heard over a speaker. All personnel report onto the center of command at once. Han aside. Well, hath she played the trump, but thou at ease, dear Luke. Exeunt Han Solo, Chewbacca, C-3PO, and R2-D2. Oh, kiss most rare. Oh, lips from heaven sent. This is a moment I'll not soon forget. Though I can sense her heart doth turn to Han, 
Still doth this kiss play tricks upon my soul. By this fair princess, I have been bewitched. Twas ever so since I saw her distress. In r beam, a pleading for our help. But though the last doth move my heart to joy, I ne'er would tempt her with a word too large. For shall a Jedi's path lead toward romance? But this sweet kiss I'll hold in memory's vault as a reminder of my noble cause to serve rebellion and my princess kind. Exit Luke. Enter Han Solo, Chewbacca, C-3PO, and R2-D2, crossing to General Riken, the Controller, and Princess Leia. A visitor hath come, my princess. Tis outside the base in Sector 12, and doth appear to be directed eastward. Tis a thing of metal, cold and harsh and sleek. It is not animal. Be like a speeder? One of ours? Nay, wait. A signal dim doth reach unto mine ears. A faint signal is heard. <laughs> Sir, six million forms of language do I know, and I may tell thee true that this strange signal is not by the Alliance used. It may perhaps be an Imperial code. It's not a friendly sound. That much is sure. Now, Chewie, come with me, and we'll to it. Aside. Snow creatures first, and now imperial droids? What portents of great evil may these be? Though I may brave, forsooth these signs do make, and my, and my courageous heart begin to fear. I find myself afraid of what may come, that my whole soul shall freeze ere this is done. To all. Chewbacca and myself have ventured out to see the probe. Now Chewie gives the shout, it fires on him, and are my respond in turn. Be gone, thou enemy of all, that's right. But wait, now what hath happened? I released a blast most simple, I a single blast. Yet it appears that single blast was all it could withstand. The blast was lethal, friends. Now naught is left, for it hath been destroyed. What wast? A droid. My blast did not strike hard, but be like the thing did self-destruct. Tis clear. A probe droid from the Empire. This does mean the start of our rebellion's fight from Hoth. For now that we have discovered, for now that we discovered have been, we lack security. Agreed, methinks. The Empire knoweth we are here on Hoth. Aside. My sense of doom and dread is not without its cause, for this is, event is grave indeed. Good friends, dear rebels, comrades one and all, have no choice but to flee hastily. Our swift evacuation shall commence. Until tis done, make ready our defense. Exeunt. Scene 7. Aboard the Empire's Super Star Destroyer. Interal, Admiral Ozel, General Veers, and Captain Piet. My Admiral? Yes, Captain. Here's a thing thou should see, good sir. We have received a report from the Hoth System probe, the best that we have found so far. Your best, belike. Shall best it be for thousands of these probes. We have a wander in the galaxy, and looking for the rebels, I want proof. Piet, not leads, proof. Only that is best. But sir, this best is better yet, for it, for it hath found some forms of life upon the ground. How better yet? How best? It could be but an error or some useless reading. If we were to follow every lead, our best would soon turn worst. And yet I do maintain the, that my best is better yet for this. Tis said that Hoth is devoid of all human forms. It seems good, sir, the rebels have been found. Why else would sign of life appear on Hoth? All warrant, sir, my forecast shall prevail. Enter Darth Vader. You have found something good? My lord, we have. A probe that late hath made descent on Hoth hath made discovery of both life forms and the appearance of a power source. Piet shows Vader the screen. Thy judgment hath proved best, Piet. Tis them, forsooth. The rebels may be found therein. My lord, there are throughout the galaxy so many settlements we have not mapped. This could be smuggler, maybe even. Nay, that is the system, sir, no I have oft. And Skywalker is there with them. Now set thy course toward Hoth, 
and General Diaz, prepare your men for combat. Exeunt Admiral Ozel, General Veers, and Captain Piet. Hath not the Sith eyes? Hath not the Sith such feelings, heart, and soul as any Jedi did air possess? If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you blast us, shall we not injured be? If you assault with lightsaber, do we not die? I have a body, as do other men, though made in part of wires and steel. And I, I various passions feel, as all men do. So I, a Sith, shall not distracted be till I attain the thing for which I seek. Therefore, I shall pursue this Skywalker unto the limit of the galaxy. For true, he hath the deaths are quite destroyed, and true, he hath the force with him as well. But truly, more than that, the boy doth have, for truth be told, his name doth stir my soul. The boy's connection to myself I do not understand as yet. This Skywalker must have some link to my life past, but what? So shall this Sith pursue this rebel lad and find the missing truth of Vader's life. Enter General Veers. What news dost thou have, General Veers? My lord, our noble fleet hath flown to Hoth in haste with hopes to catch the rebels by surprise. The fleet has moved out of light speed now, but Comscan hath detected a sharp shield of energy surrounding planet 6 within the system. It is strong enough to hinder what bombardment we can make. This grim news I report with saddened mien. It seems, my lord, our fleet is all too close. The rebels are aware of our attack, for Admiral Oswald left light speed too near to the Hoth system. He believed surprise was wiser. Say no more. Speak not to his defense. He is as clumsy as, his in as he is replete with ignorance. Prepare your troops now, Veers, to lead a ground attack. We shall still win the day, despite the blunder. Aye. Exit General Veers. Vader hails Admiral Ozel and Captain Piet, who enter by balcony. Lord Vader, I am happy to report the fleet has come out of light speed and is prepared to. Darth Vader begins to choke Admiral Ozel using the Force. Thou hast failed me once again, but never more shall thou have a chance to fail. I bring the force to bear upon thy throat that thou in thy last breath shall know my power. Captain Piet? My lord. Prepare to land our troops behind the shield of energy, and then deploy our fleet so not can escape the system. Do it, Admiral Piet, and be sure thou rise to thy new rank. Admiral Ozel dies. Exit Darth Vader. Alas, with this promotion comes some dread. For Vader hath no reverence for the head. Exit. Act 2. Scene 1. The Rebel Base on Hoth. Enter Han Solo and Chewbacca, working on the Millennium Falcon with a maintenance droid. A pilot must respect his ship with care, and play physician to her every need. With patience and with tender healing touch, I caringly Embrace each bolt and wire. Now tis repaired, good Chewie. Try it now. The ship begins to smoke and spark. Nay! Act thou with speed. Turn it off. Aside. Physician, heal thyself from too much haste. Enter Luke Skywalker. Aside. The last time I said my farewell to these compatriots of mine, was ere the Death Star battle when it seemed as though they were deserting us. But now, their valor proved, their hearts aligned with good rebellion's cause. I'll wish them on their merry way with joy. To Chewbacca. Chewbacca brave, tis now my time to leave. For soon to Dagobah, my path is bound. <clears throat> How your tight embrace doth warm my heart, but also strains my bones, thou jolly brute. Well met, lad. Han turns to the maintenance droid. Droid, there must be a reason, there must a reason be why this malfaction has occurred. But now I prithee, get thee hence. Exit maintenance droid. Art thou yet well? Aye, verily. Luke, aside. Oh, what words would I say to this man here? If words were loud enough. But hath a word e'er been created which could tell the comrade's love I feel for him, articulate the good I sense in him, 
express the debt of life I owe to him? At times, tis true that words betray us all. The mighty power of language fails to speak, and neither tongue nor rhetoric gives aid. This Han hath found a life among our band that did transform his former solo self. But now he takes his leave to pay the price of former indiscretions come to call. I would explain how much he means to me. I would disclose my deep respect for him. I would unveil my brother-like regard. I would reveal the working of my soul. But at this moment, words are rendered weak. Thus he must see the story in my eyes, peruse the tale that's told within my heart, and there read more than can ever be penned. Now be thou careful, friend. And thou as well. Exit Luke Skywalker. A noble lad and true, if fate is kind, I shall make right the danger I am in and live to fight as aside him once again. Exit Han Solo and Chewbacca. Enter the Controller and General Riken. My General, a group of Star Destroyers has just emerged from hyperspace and now has been detected in Yon Sector 4. Divert all power onto our forward shield. In doing so, we may protect the base until the transports their escape have made. Then, let us all prepare for ground assault. Good gentlemen and women, come ye near, for we shall now our very lives defend. Enter rebel pilots, including Hobby and Major Durlin and Princess Leia. Good cheer. All preparation hath been made, both for the swift retreat of transports hence and to defend our base until they are fled. The carriers shall meet up at the north, and larger transports leave once they are full. Two fighter escorts shall be sent with each and remain quite close, for our strong shield will be disarmed a fleeting length of time. Twill be a passage dangerous, no doubt, but with the force we shall prevail indeed. I prithee say again that shall only two of our small fighters match a Star Destroyer? Pray, screw your courage to the sticking place. Our ion cannon shall with lethal fire make a airy path clear. When you have cleared the shield of energy, then go anon unto your rendezvous. rendezvous. Do you do all agree? Will ye all go in Great Rebellion's name? Aye, Princess, aye. Aye. Princess, aye. We shall heed thy command. Now, everyone, unto their stations. Go! Exit rebel pilots, including Hobby and Lieutenant Derlin. Now stand by, I'll cannon. I'll end fire. Like the power generators, will their primary target be? Prepare thou now to open up the shield. May the force attend our swift retreats, and our hearts inspire. Exeunt. Scene 2. The Ice World of Hoth. Enter chorus. The transports make their way into deep space. The ion cannon leads as they take flight. But now the rebels grave new dangers face, as the Empire sends a ground assault to fight. Enter Luke Skywalker and Dak, his co-pilot, with rebel pilots, including Wedge Antilles, Jansen, and Zev. How dost fare, good sir, for I have heard of your unlucky recent incident. How is it with thee after the attack? Quite well, I thank thee, Dak. And art thou well? Aye, truthfully, Commander. I do feel I could give the Empire overthrow myself, if I were given the opportunity. A single warrior to bring them down. A single hand to show the rebellion's strength. A single mind that could outwit them all. A single dack to best the Empire's might. Oh, noble soul, how like a soldier said. It seems that thou and I are fashioned from one cloth. One fabric knits our souls together. The feeling you express is one I've known. Indeed, it is a potent privilege. And also brings responsibility. Enter Adats 1, 2, and 3. Giant Imperial Walkers on other side. But who did bid thee join with us? Be it. Twas he who ordered me to come with thee and to crush the rebels in their little base. Well said, for I know no base of base twill be a victory great when tis destroyed. But ye think we shall uh, in this fight prevail? The rebels are a force formidable. My friends, we have quite enough of talk. 
The battle is upon us. Let us go. And ye who doubt, I pray remember this. Although we are but ATATs gray and plain, we have a noble task to undertake, our mighty emperor's reign to protect, and great Darth Vader to obey and aid, and Admiral Piet to serve with pride. So shall an ATAT swoon before the fight, or should our legs be shaken ere the assault? Have we been made to cower? I say nay. An ATAT should be made of sterner stuff. I pray, good walker, is he ever thus? I truly, sir, I have never yet met an all-terrain armored transport who is loftier of mind than this one here. Indeed, although like us he is made of steel, he never enters battle zones unless he hath made some great speech to steal his nerves. It does no harm. No harm but to mine ears. I'd rather fight than speech. Now let us go, these rebels to destroy. The Adats advance on Luke Skywalker and the other rebel pilots. Now stay together, men. Alas, good Luke. The ship's computer hath malfunctioned. I'm not set for this attack. Be patient. We shall use pattern Delta now. Anon. Rebels and Adats duel, and rebels quickly retreat. A hit. A very palpable hit. Wait. Although my shots have found their mark, their blasts have no effect. It is their armor, fie! Our blasters are too weak to penetrate the strength of their robust exteriors. Rogue group, use thy harpoons and cables too. Let us go by their legs and trip them up. Perhaps they may be bested from beneath. Dak, art thou with me? This malfunction hath put fire into the system. I'll attempt to quickly gain some power another way. I prithee, be thou careful now, young Dak. The fight resumes. Dak is struck. Alas! I die! Farewell, Commander Luke. Dak dies. Nay, Dak! O oh, agony of battle, curse of war, and dread of every soldier's heart, to suffer at the, ha at the hands of enemies, to end one's days by power of the unjust. What use is war? For it doth ravage all within its pass. And what hath it e'er solved? Tis rare that peace doth follow in war's wake. Indeed, this recent blow doth only urge and heighten my destructive sentiments. I shall avenge thee, Dak, and slay these here who hath thy lifeblood tain and sealed thy fate. No more of these amusements with the weak. Tis a time to make this victory our own. Head for the power generator, mates. The battle's nearly won. Rogue thee, Rogue three, dost hear? I do, Rogue leader. Wedge, I need thee now. I've lost my gunner. Thou must strike their legs with thy harpoon. I'll give thee aid. We'll fly. Together, follow close behind me. Aye, now activate harpoon and slay these beasts. The fight resumes. Wedge and his gunner, Jansen, strike at at one with a rope around the legs. What treachery! The rebels have assailed my weakest part. My legs, good comrades, they have struck where I most vulnerable am. Well hit, brave Jansen. Now encircle him and bring this giant down to meet his end. It worketh, friends. His legs hath been confined, and thus the brute hath trouble with his stride. Just one more pass around, and then detach. The cable is detached. He falls. Hark! I perish now. My comrades win the day. Adat one falls and dies. Aha! And thus our deck hath been avenged. I see thy handiwork. Well done, strong wedge. Dak's memory we honor by this strike. The rebels have destroyed one of our lot, but we shall yet overwhelm them utterly. I'll make approach unto their hidden base, identify their systems in my sights, and then shall on the generator fire. Rogue two, art thou beside me in this fight? We need the help of every fighter here. Not long ago, thou rescued Han and me from our meek shelter on the ice of Hoth. Thou art a man of cunning, strength, and wit. And thus I ask thee on thy honor, sir. Art thou prepared to face this harsh assault? I verily, rogue leader, her that I am. My life I am prepared to sacrifice to save rebellion from this fierce attack. Then let us all approach the knaves again. Prepare your swift harpoon, and we shall strike. That they think themselves the noble ones, but we defend the Emperor's righteousness today. Well spoken. Let us fight for the Empire's might. They duel again. O oh, Luke, I have been hit, and die anon. 
Remember me when where thou speakest of this. Zev is slain. Luke is struck and falls to the ground. Alas, poor Zev. Too many lost. Such good and worthy men have met their end to these confounded walkers. Fie. This battle bleak may mean rebellion's end. Tis now my turn. The ship hath ta'en a hit. I fall, yet am not slain. Indeed, though here I lie upon the ground, I spy an opportunity. For while this awful monster walks above, I spy his weakness as I lie below. He passes just beyond me. Now to it! Revenge should have no bounds when friends are slain, and now their memory doth push me on. My lightsaber shall strike the lethal blow. I'll hit where he shall feel it, in his heart. If ever such cruel beast did have a heart. Luke strikes Adat 3 from below, and Adat 3 dies. I perish, comrade True, but fall with pride. Although my fellow Adats meet their ends, I press forward my, my goal with purpose firm. The rebel's power generator is within the target of my laser's keen. Now all the fallen Adats I salute, as for my noble emperor I shoot. He shoots and destroys the power generator. Exeunt all in confusion. Scene 3. The rebel base on Hoth. Enter General Riken and Princess Leia with an aide. Our power is insufficient to protect two transports at one time. Tis risky, aye, but this base is overpowered. This base overpowered is, and shall, I fear, withstand no more of this attack. We have no choice. Indeed, thou speakest true. Launch all patrols. Evacuate the staff. Who do who who do not remain within the base? Make haste. Enter Han Solo and Chewbacca on balcony, repairing the Millennium Falcon. These endless fixes now are nearly done, and soon we may take flight. Tis none too soon. This base shall not survive this great attack. <laughs> nay, nay, this one here, that one there. Tis clear? Aside. I do admit this Wookiee here is dear, but if he break my ship, I'll break his pate. Enter C-3PO with R2-D2. My R2 small. Pray thou be safe, good friend, and take especial care of Master Luke. Farewell, farewell, parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say farewell till thou hast left. R2-D2 aside. Till thou hast left? No poet, he indeed. Alas, it seems that romance is not one of 3 po's six million forms of speech. Zounds! What is that powerful shaking here? The base begins to crumble even now. Our humble shelter made of snow and ice is now defeated by the Emperor's might and starts to fall apart. Oh, shall we too? Shall our rebellion suffer the same fate to be destroyed by the Empire cruel, to be demolished by the Emperor's strength? Though I had planned to go and save myself from Jabba's bounty hunters, I cannot. The smuggler's captain shall never desert while his friends nearby do mortal peril face. I shall not steal away and leave behind the princess who doth lead the rebels true. She is of great importance, and my life must be secondary to her fate. So shall I take her in the Falcon Swift and sprint her away to some place safe. Tis not because of how I feel about her, nay. Not there of love, that much is true. Or if tis not, I'll tell myself it is. Now to it, Han, ere our great cause is lost. Han Solo moves to General Riken and Princess Leia. Your worship, are thou well? Oh, wherefore art thou within the base? Hast thou not fled? The center of command has been struck down. And yet, hast thou thy clearance to depart? Depart I shall, but first deliver thee into the ship. Your Highness, we must take this final transport. Tis our only hope. A blast is heard, closer, followed by the voice of an officer through a comlink. Imperial troops have come into the base! Imperial troops have come into the base! Now in thy stubborn ways, and set aside thy prejudice, thou wilt come with me now, I do command it. Neither argument, nor moving speech, nor aught that thou canst say, shall sway me now. Thou wilt come with me, princess. 
Leia, aside. Oh, noble man, protector of my soul. Leia, to aid. Send our evac- evacuation code and get thee to thy transport. Exeunt General Riken and Aid. Han Solo and Princess Leia begin to walk toward the transport. Wait for me! As they make their way to the ship, a wall falls in their path. The battle is within the very walls, and every port and tells of dread and doom. Han speaks into his comlink. Good transport. This is Solo. Take your leave. Our way has now become a wayward thing. All is filled with mounds of ice that are blocking our path. This moment calls for quick decision. Thus, I shall with Leia flee on Falcon's wings. Han Solo and Princess Leia run the other way toward the Millennium Falcon, shutting the door against C-3PO. Wait, where did you go? Pray do come back. Most typical is this. Oh, wretched fate, to be deserted by my friends most dear. These human beings care but little for us droids who ever serve with loyalty. Thus, I shall end my days within this base, a frozen remnant of the rebel stay on hearth. Be like one day explorers shall discover this defeated base, shall dig into its core and find a golden droid whose final resting place was ice and snow. Who would abandon such a lovely droid? No doubt this shall be their response when they espy me here. What wretched humans would leave such a one as this alone to rot? I shudder at this thought. Let it not be. Oh, open up your hearts unto my kind. Then open wide this door for kindness sake. The door opens. Anon, thou goldenrod, thou heap of scrap. Else shalt thou ever stay within this base and make thyself a lasting icy grave. C-3PO, aside. This man is both the reason for my pain and for my joy. My gratitude overflows. They enter the Millennium Falcon. Now wherefore doth the ship not function right? Pray, would it help if I disembark and push with all a princess might upon? Be like. Pray, Captain Solo, Captain Solo. Tut. It shall wait. This bucket full of bolts shall near beyond that blockade make escape. We may as well depart the base aboard a Tauntaun's furry back. The ship hath yet surprising, keen maneuvers, sweetheart. Watch. The ship protects us with its lasers true against the Imperial troops who come at us. See, Princess, see. Now, Chewie, let us fly and hope we shall not burn the engine out. Repairs are made. Let us repair to space. One day thou shalt be wrong, and while I hope I shall bear witness to thy failure great. Anon, Chewbacca, lead us to our fate. Exeunt the Millennium Falcon. Scene 4. The Rebel Base on Hoth. Enter Luke Skywalker and R2-D2. The recent battle is both lost and won. Tis lost because of the rebels who expired. Tis lost because our base is compromised. Tis lost because our time on Hoth is done. Tis lost because we now evacuate. And yet, tis won because two walkers fell. Tis won because our foes arrived too late. Tis won because our transport is away. Tis won because we live to fight again. Our two we leave anon. With all due speed, prepare the ship for takeoff. Fear not, our two, for now we fly. Now flies my weary soul to Dagobah, the palace that hath in, in vision called to me. I know not what or who this Yoda is, yet do I trust the ghost of my dear Ben. To be a Jedi is my calling now, to learn the ways of the most potent force. Already have I made more mentors than most people would e'er know in seven lives. But here I am, drawn toward another quest. To travel to an unknown system, I and meet an unknown person who, perhaps, doth yet, doth not expect my sudden visit there. Yet I believe the words that came from Ben were better than a foolproof prophet's tale. There is a tide in the affairs of a Jedi, which taken at the flood leads to the Force. Omitted, 
All the voyage of their life is bound in black holes and in miseries. On such a full sea, I am now afloat, and I must take the current where it serves, or lose my chance to find my destiny. R2-D2, aside. O oh, noble speech, with feeling brute and raw, my master's honor shall I serve with pride. How best to show him I stand by his side. I'll offer ways to help him navigate. R2-D2, to Luke. Nay, nothing's wrong. I merely change your course. We shall not rendezvous with our friends yet. Unto the system Dagobah we travel, and what we shall meet there, time shall unravel. Exeunt. Scene 5. Space. In the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. Enter Han Solo, Chewbacca, and Princess Leia. Hoth is a memory, but trouble still doth follow close behind with threatening force. The Empire ships aggressively pursue my well-beloved ship. Shall we escape? Truly, Chewy, I did see them too. I pray thee say, what hast thou seen, O Han? Two star destroyers coming toward the ship. Enter C-3PO. Uh, sir, may I but say a thing to thee? Pray, shut up, or shut him down. Anon, prepare our shield. They still may be out, they still may be outrun. Han, aside. With all my pilot's wisdom, skill, and might, I shall attempt to outwit those who chase. Now watch, you empire vile, how do I fly? First up and down, a up and down. This Han will lead them up and down. Away we go. Now back and forth, then back around again. They are confounded by my errant moves. Ha ha, they are confused and fall behind. Thus have we slipped away, soon safe from harm. Han to Chewbacca. Make ready for the jump to hyperspace. But they do approach. Not yet. Observe. The Millennium Falcon makes a sound and fails. Observe? What's to observe? Pray tell me, plain. A fig. The ship seems to malfunction. Hey, tis possible we may in trouble be. Tried to warn thee, sir, but the hyperdrive hath damaged been, and cannot do its task. Light speed is very unfeasible. Correction. We in trouble truly are. Oh, that all I had fixed were truly fixed. But now I must, in haste and under threat of death, attempt to fix the ship once more. He runs to repair the ship, yelling back to Chewbacca. Where are the horizontal boosters hid? <laughs> Alville dampers, where are they? Aside. If only I were more organized, tis true that order's not a smuggler's gift. To Chewbacca. Bring me the hydro spanners, quickly now. Aside. I know not how we shall escape this time. Of all the situations I've been in, of all the problems small or dangers great, of all the rubs and scrabble I've scratched my life, of all the enemies just barely fled, this moment doth seem the worst of all. Loud sounds. Han is knocked aside. A lock. Now what is this? What shakes the ship? How have we gone from bad still to worse yet? Good Han, return at once! He runs back to the cockpit. Tis asteroids! Aside. A wicked thought and wonderful idea that cometh to me in this frightful time. I shall here chart a course none would expect, not flee from danger, nay, but welcome it. And in doing so, the Emperor's grip, while rescuing my princess from all harm. To Chewbacca. Set course 271. What did thou say? Thou will not enter the asteroid field, for certain thou art wild but not insane. Yet they would be the matter to give chase. Thou must not do this to impress me, Han. Aside. Already he hath won my heart, tis true, yet I would rather live to tell him so. Sir, I 
attend. The possibility of navigating fields of asteroids is 3,720 to but one. The odds are well against thee here. The odds of rescuing a princess, low. The odds of a smuggler turning rebel, lower. The odds of ending the Death Star, lowest yet. I tell thee, Joyd, assail me not with odds. Aside. Behold, what keen maneuvers doth he make, and yet, like Gungan sinking into the swamp, our enemies do fall behind us, slain. What bravery he so showeth for my sake. If you recall, your highness, you did hope you would bear witness to my failure great, and maybe now. My word, I do rescind. We may be pulverized if we remain afloating in this field of wayward rocks. Thou hast thy honor proven. Han, now please, let us seek safely in another place. Cannot argue with that argument. I shall attempt to fly us closer in towards a large asteroid. Oh, this is suicide. For where have we to go where we may yet survive? Are we not bound for death? Aye. This one here shall do. It hath a goodly look. What goodly look? Be calm, I prithee, for it shall suffice. Excuse me, princess, but where are we bound? The Millennium Falcon flies deep into one of the asteroids. My hope flies upon you, most worthy man. My hope for us and our safety too. I hope it is the force that leadeth thee. I hope that thou dost know what thou dost do. Thy hopes do echo mine, my lady. True. Exeunt into it an asteroid's tunnel. Scene 6. Aboard the Empire's Super Star Destroyer. Enter Admiral Piet with Darth Vader replacing his mask. Piet, aside. Oh, sight most tragic this. A robot man who doth require a mask to stay alive. What situation e'er did lead to this? How can he stand to live beneath a mask? But soft, Piet, and reconsider this. I verily, how shall I judge? The mask he wears is far more obvious than most. With Vader it is plain he wears a mask, though few have seen the scarring underneath. But truly, what man doth not wear a mask? For all of us are masked in some way. Some shews sharp cruelty as their outward face. Some put themselves behind a king's facade. Some hide behind the mask of bravery. Some put on the disguise of arrogance. But underneath of our masks are we not one? Do not all wish for love and joy and peace? And whether rebel or imperial, do our hearts all beat in, in time to make the pounding rhythm of the galaxy? So while Darth Vader's mask keeps him alive and sits upon his face for all to see, tis possible he is more honest than a man who wears no mask but hides his self. But come, Piet, still now thy pratting tongue. His private time is done, his mask back on. Yes, Admiral? Our ships have found the swift Millennium Falcon, Lord. However, it hath ventured deep into an asteroid field. It seems unsafe to make pursuit therein. To follow it is too far is far too great a risk. Thy fear of asteroids concerns me not. I want the ship, not thy most weak dismay. I understand, my lord, and shall obey. Exeunt. Scene seven. The Dagobah system. Enter Luke Skywalker and R two D two. What misadventure I have seen today! Our sensors spied no cities or machines within this system desolate but life forms plenty. As we made our way onto the planet's atmosphere, all went awry. My X-wing ship began to shake and moan. My scopes had failed, and I did blindly spin into a landing doomed to end with strife. Tis almost fortunate that I did land within this swampy bog where now the ship is partway sunk. For had I hit the ground, my ship and droid, and even my own self, might have been crushed and everything destroyed. But now, my ship is fixed in the mire, and how it shall come out, I cannot tell. Was this first trouble all I would endure? Nay, nay, it seemeth fate did not seem fit to send pain singular, but multiple. Fate hath provided pains abundantly, for this is not the end of our distress. As R2 and I headed for the shore, 
with he fell into the water, wheels to scope, and was assaulted by a mighty beast. I swallowed whole and disappeared from sight. For seeming ages, I did search for him, to no avail. And then, with frightful scream, he was ejected from the swamp as proton-filled torpedoes from their shaft. Above my head he sailed, well o'er to the ground, and landed in a heap of dirt and grime. So it's only for this metal-tasting shell this little droid shall live to see tomorrow. So much misfortune. After all this pain, I should feel grateful still to have my life. But now we are marooned within a place where neither friend nor contact may be found. I should have listened to the wise R2 when he said coming here would work, work us woe. Our camp is now set up, our food prepared. My faithful R2 changeth up his power. The semblance of good order we present. But I have neither stomach nor desire to sit down to a hale and hearty feast. More pressing, too, I must this Yoda find. Indeed, if that good man doth even exist. Look round about, R2. Is this place not unlikely for a Jedi Master's home? Tis strange. Tis passing strange. Tis pitiful. Enter Yoda, hidden behind. I know not what it is, dear friend. Tis like something appearing from a dream. Some midnight reverie I cannot shake. For neither does this circumstance seem real, nor do I slumber here. I that I know. Not dream, not wake, but something in between. The strangest of the scene creeps in my bones, yet also I do feel familiar pangs. I know not. I do feel... Yoda reveals himself. What dost thou feel? Hmm? Prithee, I would truly know. What is it thou feelst? Luke points his blaster at Yoda. That odd familiar sense that we are watched. <laughs> oh, 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 away with weapons! I mean no harm, but wonder why thou hast come here. Thou speaking imp, I look for someone here. Mmm, looking are you, hmm? Found someone you have, it seems. <laughs> Is that not correct? Tis true, I may suppose. I've someone found, though such a one as this did not expect. Mmm, help you I can, I. Aside. I indeed, more help shall be than he imagines. Nay, I think not. My search is for a great and mighty warrior, a man of strength. Oh, great warrior! A great warrior you seek. Hm. Wars not make one great. But soft, no more of talking, for my appetite dinner demanded. Thus I shall explore the food thou hast prepared. Mmm, and I shall taste. Nay, nay, unhand my supper, little one. <coughs> How dost thou grow so big when the food of thy diet is of this strange kind? Attend, my friend. I must leave this alone. My food I shall have need of as we strive to free our ship. I did not try to land inside that puddle drear, and if we could, our ship remove, we would. But we cannot. At least, I know not how it shall be done. Yoda rummages through Luke's supplies, discarding them to the ground. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate ship. Thou canst not get it out, hmm? Ooh, what merry light! Yoda removes a light from Luke's supplies. A mess thou hast made! Give me that light. Mm, Tis mine! It is mine. I shall the pretty thing have, or I help you not. I need not thy, uh, thine assistance, nay. I need my lamp, for it shall guide me out of this most slimy and disgusting hole of mud. Oh, what slimy, what mud? You speakest indeed of my home. R2-D2 reaches out and grabs the lamp. Ah, alas, naughty droid! R2-D2 and Yoda fight for the lamp. 
R oh, R2, let the creature have it now. R2-D2 releases the lamp. Now move along, good fellow. We have much to do. Thou art small in both size and health. Nay, nay, I shall stay, for I shall stay and help thee. Find thy long-lost friend. Thou dost not understand, thou useless scamp. I search not for a friend in this damp place, but for a Jedi Master, wise in skill. Oh, Jedi Master! Yoda that you seek it is. Tis truly Yoda! Luke, aside. A strange turn of events. This tiny sprite may yet prove useful if he knows the man. To Yoda. Attend. Thou knowst of Yoda, little one? Hmm, I'll take thee to him. Aye, but first, let us eat food. Come, I good food have. <laughs> I follow. R2, stay and watch the camp. Mayhaps some hope still lives within this damp. Exeunt, Luke following Yoda. Act 3. Scene 1. Aboard the Millennium Falcon, inside the asteroid. Enter Han Solo, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, and C-3PO. Now, shall I shut down everything except the ship's emergency power systems? Afraid to ask, but doth this mean I shall be shut down as well? Nay, nay, good droid, for thou shalt speak unto the Falcon to determine wherefore doth the hyperdrive not operate all, all right. For once I find the useful golden rod. The ship shakes and all are rocked from side to side. Possible that this asteroid may not be entirely stable. Dost thou think? O droid of wisdom, skill, and excellence, however me would I survive if I did not have thee here to reveal such mysteries, from usefulness to obvious within a single stroke. I pray, Chewbacca, take this scholar made of wires and metal to the back and plug him into the Harper Drive. Prehend the strange and varied ways of human beings. True it is that I did only try to help. Exeunt Chewbacca and C-3PO. The ship shakes again, and Leia falls into Han's arms. Leia, aside. Oh, happy accent, oh, fall most fair. Now in his arms, where I have longed to be. I know not whether tis the ship, or if it tis my heart that I feel quaking. Yet, alas, in this, this moment not ben befet, sir, love, the situation too strained. I wish with all my being to be in this place, but not like this. To Han. Pray, let me go. Tut tut. I pray thee, let me go. Han, aside. O oh, small request that tears apart my soul. To Leia. Indeed, indeed. But not with such excitement overcome. My captain, being held by you is far too plain a thing to be ever excited in my mood. Crave your kindly pardon, sweetheart fierce. But we have little time for something else. I'll leave thee here alone, and then mayhap the time apart shall heighten thy desire. Exit Han Solo. O oh, man of pride and will most obstinate, however will I love thee, being as you are, but being other than you are, I would not love thee. How this pirate hath laid claim upon the bounty of my soul, or Wherefore did I speak so testily? Why is it that whenever he is near, my wit is turned into a laser beam, with Han placed firmly in its sights? I tear his heart in twain with words too cruel and harsh, then wonder why he is so full of pride. Tis now quite clear that he, with arrogance, doth speak that he may his heart protect. Forsooth was ever a woman placed in so delicate a situation yet. Exit Princess Leia. Enter C-3PO. Oh, where is that knave R2 now? For when I need him most, then he is far away, perhaps on some adventure, which will serve to puff him up most mightily and leave him ever bragging o'er his exploits. Pish! The scrawny errant scamp perplexes me, for he is both my nuisance and delight, the thorn deep in my side, 
and stranger still, the very object of my happiness. Enter Han Solo and Chewbacca. Now, Captain Solo, pray a word with thee. Han, aside. A word from thee belike means hundreds more. I know not where your ship did learn to speak. It hath a most peculiar dialect. It is as though to were programmed by a thief, and spends its days with smugglers, thugs, and crooks. But now, no more of that. My point is made. It doth report the power coupling on. The axis negative is polarist, and must be replaced to operate. Tis plain it must be replaced B. Presume thou not to tell a pilot, one so grand as me at least, the businesses of his ship. Exit C-3PO. Good Chewie. Mm -hmm. It seems we must replace the power coupling negative, yes? Mm -hmm. Exit Chewbacca. Enter Princess Leia. Aside, working. We are alone. Yet every time I have approached her recently, I've been rebuffed. This should not be a nut I cannot crack. I am not ignorant in women's ways. Although, by troth, most often when I speak of she or her, I indicate my ship. And yet, I am a man of many strengths. I pilot ships with talent, skill, grace. In battles or in races hard to best, my swift maneuvers legendary are, and through the galaxy my ship is known. But with this princess, all my skill is not. My tongue is tied. I resort to barbs and witticisms, sloppily, sloppily conveyed. How shall I show this princess my true heart? And how set aside my ego and be kind? Here in this moment, I shall undertake to set my pathway not toward my pride, but, but through the smoother course that runs to love. He approaches to help her and is shoved away. Pray patience, worship. I but try to help. Couldst thou forswear thy pompous attitude and promise thou shalt ne'er call me that name? Ay, Leia. Leia, aside. Pray thee, give me patience now to make him thine. Respond thou, not with fire. To Han. You do not make it simple. Yes, tis true. But tis not, tis not I alone who is to blame. For thou colts could softer and more gentle be. O princess, may we end these pointless games. May we two souls of flame extinguished be just long enough to drink of love's rewards. I ask thee, truly, dost thou sometimes think that certain virtues may be found in me? Canst thou imagine ever looking deep into my soul to see the man within? Leia stops working and rubs her sore hands. Occasionally, mayhap. When you are not acting in the manner of a scoundrel. Han Solo takes Leia's hands in his. A scoundrel. A scoundrel is the word you choose. I like that word when spoken from your lips. Pray cease that touch. It doth my heart confuse. But wherefore cease? What reason shall I eclipse? The greater reason of my heart's intent. But lo, my hands are dirtied by my work. My hands are likewise dirty. Pray, assent unto this moment. What fear makes you shirk? What fear? I tell thee, I am I'm not afraid. Did I imagine that your hand did shake? Though likest that I am a scoundrel maid? For thy life could more scoundrel gladly take. If thou whilst cast my suit off, think again. I would that thou within me deeper look. I tell thee true, that I do like nice men. I too am nice. They kiss. Enter C-3PO. Leia, aside. He kisses by the book. Sir... Sir, I've isolated the reverse flux power coupling. Have I done thee proud? Exit Princess Leia. Oh, thank you, 3PO. Thank you very much. But speak none of it, sir. I have a touch. Exeunt. Scene two. Aboard the Empire's Super Star Destroyer. 
Enter Darth Vader and Captain Nita in beam. The swift Millennium Falcon made its way under the field of asteroids. That Vader was the last that they did within Narscope's air pier. They must have been destroyed if one considers all the damage we have done here. Your answer's insufficient, Captain, for I know they are alive. My scanners are poor proxies for the Force. Now listen well to my comment. I tell thee, every ship that hath some power left to give shall search the asteroid field until they have been found. I shall with haste fulfill thy shrewd decree. Exit Captain Nita from beam. Enter Admiral Piet. My lord? Yes, Admiral. The Emperor commands that thou do contact him at once. Then move the ship out of the asteroid field, that I might with my masters clearly speak. We will, my lord. Exit Admiral Piet. Now shall I speak with my dread Emperor, the man who gave me life when all was lost, the man to whom I owe all that I am and heir shall be, the man, indeed, who like a father is to me. His plans for power and schemes most excellent, I do obey and carry out with pride. Though people fear my aspect, bleak and dark, they should, more surely, fear what I will do when answering his perfect, flawless will. For sooner would I sacrifice my life than disobey the word of this great man. Enter Emperor Palpatine in beam. What is thy bidding, master pure and true? There is a great disturbance in the Force. I, too, have felt it. A new enemy arises in the rebel who destroyed the Death Star, and I have no doubt this boy is kin to Anakin Skywalker. Vader, aside. Oh, profoundest revelation. I knew he was powerful and bore Skywalker's name, <laughs> yet that the boy is kin to Anakin I did not see. To the Emperor. How is this possible? You must only search within your feelings, Lord Vader. <laughs> <clears throat> then thou shalt too know tis true. He could destroy us. He is but a boy, and Obi-Wan no longer is his help. The Force is strong with him, and mark me well. The son of Skywalker must ne'er become a Jedi. Dost thou comprehend my words? Vader, aside. I do his meaning understand, and yet another future for this boy, all right. Not deaths, but something even greater still. It may be that this young Skywalker will still prove to be most worthy of the name. To the Emperor. If he could be but turned, an ally strong he could become. Indeed. Thou speakest true. The boy may prove himself an asset sure. Can it be done? What is thy true reply? The boy shall surely join us, or shall die. Exeunt. Scene 3. Inside Yoda's homestead. Enter Luke Skywalker. This creature I have followed to his home, but still no further answers are revealed. It seemeth that he stalls in bringing me unto the one I truly hope to see. With all that have befallen in this place, my patience run in thin. I'll press the point. Enter Yoda. Thy generosity is truly rare. I'll warrant that thy food delicious is. Yet neither rhyme nor reason have I heard, or wherefore we may not go. Even now, to see good Master Yoda where he lives. Pray, patience, young one, for Jedi too must eat. Thus, my good food, eat now. How many leagues away is Yoda? Shall the journey to him long and perilous be? Oh, not far is Yoda. I soon thou shalt be with him. First, eat a roof leaf. Feast for a Jedi. Food that enlivens the mind, should thy repast be. And now a question. Drives the young man's heart to learn the Jedi way. This is an inquiry perceptive, friend, for I am driven by four unto the Force, 
My noble father doth inform my steps. Mmm, thy father indeed. Powerful Jedi was he. Powerful Jedi. Avaunt, thou silly creature. How canst thou know my father know? My, for surely thou dost not e'en know who I am. Fie, I know not what or who or why or when or where or how hath brought upon this meaning. Time is short. Each minute passed with thee hath gone to waste. Hmm. I cannot teach him. The boy hath none of patience. How shall he be taught? The voice of the ghost of Obi-Wan Kenobi is heard. He patience lacks, but patience can be learned. Mm, much anger in him. Sudden and quick in quarrel. Too like his father. Was I then different when thou didst teach me? Mm, his is not ready. Tis now the thing that I see. This one's unprepared. Tis Yoda. Nay, but Ben, pray argue for my cause, for there verily prepared I am. I can and shall a Jedi be. True, Ben? Ready, are you? Hmm? What know you yet of ready? Say not of ready. For eight hundred years have I the Jedi trained, so say not ready. I, my own counsel, shall keep on who's to be trained. A Jedi is wise, a strong commitment, and a most serious mind are necessary. Long have I watched him, all his life looking away to the future, hmm? to the horizon. Ne'er his mind on where he was, what he was doing. Ventures, hmm. excitement, hmm. a Jedi craveth not these things. Thou art reckless, I. And so was I, if thou dost think on it. And he is too old. The training to begin now, certain, he is too old. But Master Yoda... I have learned so much. And will he finish the thing he doth begin here? I prithee, tell me. I shall not fail thee. Tis my promise true. For I am not afraid of anything. Mm. Thou shalt be yet, Luke. My words most carefully heed. Thou shalt be, indeed. Exeunt. Scene 4. Aboard the Millennium Falcon, inside the asteroid. Enter Han Solo, Chewbacca, and C-3PO. Uh, good sir, if I may venture my belief. I tell thee honestly, C-3PO, that neither appetite nor inclination have I to feast upon your odd beliefs. Do thou thy work, but keep thy opinion out and we shall feast together on the silence. Enter Princess Leia in fear. Oh, Han, a horrid sight I have just seen. Whilst I did in the cockpit sit and think. On what, pray tell? What didst thou think upon? Tis not the time for your jokes and parries, please. As I did sit there, suddenly a jolt went through me as I heard a sound upon the window. Looking closer, I espied a second beast outside that hard pond. The window fell. There's something out there, Han, beyond the ship, abiding in the cave. A great sound is heard, and the ship shakes. <laughs> Listen. I shall venture out to sea. Nay, art thou mad? Is it not wise or safe to go without when there are creatures we know nothing of? This bucket is just fixed. Wilt thou... I let something tear it apart. I see thy reason and shall go with thee. I shall with courage and with honor stay behind to bravely guard the ship. Another sound is heard. Oh dear. Exit C-3PO as the others go outside the ship. What is this ground that we do walk upon? Tis strange. It doth not feel like rock at all. 
Indeed. With thine assessment, I agree. It seems there is much moisture in this place. I have a feeling bad about this cave. What odd new situation find we here? Do these signs or portents give thee fear? Aye. Han sees something move. Take thou cover. He shoots. Tis all right. What is? Tis what did I suspect? Some Minox. They are fastened to the ship, chewing on power cables. Minox? Oh, what beasts. Return inside. We shall search for more. Several Minox fly by. Han shoots, and the cave walls shake. Hold one moment. Something seems awry. For blaster fire should not cause walls to shake. Han shoots the cave wall, and the ground shakes mightily. Oh, horror! For now do I understand. The, ga the cave doth quake whenever it is shot. But what knows rock of pain or stone of hurt? Whenever did a cave feel anything? Impossible it is, unless this cave is much more than a cave. Pray, go inside. They run into the Millennium Falcon. With speed now. Chewie, let's all fly away. The Empire is without. We should not go. We've no time to discuss this in a committee. Oh, fie. Thou oh, scoundrel, I am no committee. They, they arrive, arrive in the, in the cockpit, cockpit and start the ship. See reason, for thou canst not make the jump to light speed miss this field of asteroids. Make sure that back ends find a seat. We go. They begin to leave the cave, which is actually an exogorth, or space slug. Its mouth begins to close. Enter C-3PO. Observe, we are destroyed. I see it plain. Oh, we are doomed. The cave, it doth collapse. This is no cave, and I'm not its food. Now we do fly. Another close escape. Exeunt C-3PO, Han Solo, Princess Leia, and Chewbacca in the Millennium Falcon, flying out of Exogorth's mouth and leaving it alone on stage. Alas, another meal half fled and gone, and in the process I am surely hurt. These travelers who have escaped my reach used me past the endurance of a block. My stomach they did encourage mightily, with jabs and pricks as though as need were, a bouncing in my belly, oh cruel fate. To be a space slug is a lonely lot, with no one on this rock to share my life. No true companion here to mark my days, and now my meals do from my body fly. Was e'er a beast, be it by supper so abuddest? Was e'er a creature's case so pitiful? Was e'er an exogorth as sad as I? Was e'er a tragedy as deep as mine? I shall with weeping crawl back to my cave, which shall sans food belike become my grave. Exit. Scene 5. The Dagobah System. Enter Yoda, R2-D2, and Luke Skywalker training. Luke, aside. This Yoda is indeed a teacher wise, and hath agreed to train me in the way of Jedi. Strong and quick I show myself. With leaps and flips I train my body and instill within a je Jedi's discipline. I, with the force I like and bat fly. My spirit feeleth free. My muscles strong. My mind is calm inside. My heart is still. What gratitude I feel toward this new and treasured mentor. Thus I train my best. His expectations I'll not disappoint. Now run! Indeed, run! A Jedi's strength doth surely come from the Force, Luke. But mind the dark side. Anger, fear, aggression from the dark side are they. Easily they flow. Quick to join you in a fight. Aye. They do not fail. Once on the dark path, forever it shall control thy destiny, Luke. It shall consume thee, as it did the apprentice of good Obi-Wan. Darth Vader, 
legendary is his power. But master, hath the dark side greater strength? Nay, nay, forsooth, nay. Tis quicker, easier, more seductive only. But how, good master, shall I know the good side from the bad, the darkness from the light? Thou shalt know, my lad, when thou art come and passive. Yoda, aside. I hope thou shalt know, when faced with terror, and with thy father's grim fate, I hope thou shalt know. To Luke. A Jedi uses the Force only for knowledge, and defense, is clear? The Force is no club, neither is it a weapon used for attacking. Yet it is still a weapon for defense. So wherefore may I not the Force employ? Nay, there's no wherefore. Nothing more shall come today. From thy questions, rest. Luke, aside. Believed am I this training is to complete, if only for this day, which hath been years. But is this not a strange and troubling feeling? Where only moments passed, I felt at ease. Now there's some sprite within that troubles me. A chill. A solemn aura in my bones. I would not much ado or nothing make. But still shall I ask Yoda what it is. To Yoda. I feel a cold. A presage here of death. What is it that I sense within this place? Yoda points to the opening of a cave. With the Force's dark side, is that place yonder quite strong? A place of evil. Discover, thou shalt. That wherever is good is found, evil is nearby. Here on Dagobah, tis also so, for in here that evil place is. Bound thou art now, Luke, to enter it and face its deepest darknesses. But, sir, I prithee, tell me, what's within? Only that which thou shalt take away with thee, Luke. Luke begins to enter the cave, carrying his weapons. Take not thy weapons. Luke enters, bringing his weapons, as Yoda and R2-D2 remain outside. What twists of knotted vines and tangled fates await me in this hole? I shall go in and prove that I am not afraid of it, nor any task or misadventures here. What evil can I await I have not seen? For I have faced evil enemies who killed my mentor and my family. What evil in this place can greater be? Now doth time seem to slowly beat its pace, and all is like a thick and restless dream. But wait, who comes into this deep, dark place? It moves with grace. Is it my father good? Enter Shadow of Darth Vader. Nay, nay, how I have been deceived, abused. For it is Vader here, my greatest foe. The cruel defiler of my father's youth, I stand prepared to do battle as a Jedi, full of rage and righteous hate. Now up, lightsaber, light my keen revenge. Lay on, Darth Vader, damned henchman vile. And now we fight. Yet seems it that my limbs are made of stone. But he is slower still. I see my chance to strike and let it fall. The blow that shall release my father's soul. Now Vader's head doth fall into the ground, and I feel no relief, but only pain. The mask doth, sp the mask doth split, his visage to reveal. Oh, I shall see the face that killed a man, that killed a thousand fathers like my own. But wait, what is this here? And can it be? This is no face of Vader, tis my face. The horror, oh, the horror! Darker yet the air I had imagined possible. The greatest evil I, might, I may face myself. Exit Luke in fear. Now hath he seen it, and he shall ever see it, till he sees it through. 
exit Yoda, leaving R2-D2 alone on stage. O oh, strange and somber night that falleth here, my master Luke all out of sorts from what he spies inside this hole. What lesson is it Yoda hath revealed to him inside? I would that I master could I protect, but such is not the role I have to play. And thus, since I may not protect or be, my path shall be to play the fool and watch. I shall maintain my droid-like silence and bear witness as the boy becomes the man. The learner doth become the Jedi true. Content yourself with this, R2, and rest for other times than those require your best. Exit. Scene 6. Space. Aboard the Empire's Super Star Destroyer and the Millennium Falcon. Enter Admiral Piet and Imperial Controller with Darth Vader and Bounty Hunters, including Boba Fett, aside, aboard the Super Star Destroyer. These Bounty Hunters, oh, they reek. We have no need for their most wretched scum. Ow, sir. The rebels surely shall not escape us now. We have been hailed by the Avenger ship. Now let us hear it. There shall be rewards plenty for the one who finds the swift Millennium Falcon. You may use whatever approaches, weapons, means, or what you will, but mark you will, I want them all alive. There shall be no disintegrations. Clear. Boba Fett, aside. The darkest Sith that e'er did live, and I am his choice to find those he cannot. And who am I? A mere bounty hunter like the others here? Nay, far more. I am Boba Fett, the vilest, fiercest, most deadly hunter in the galaxy. More than that, Darth Vader knows that I shall serve him well and faithfully in the pursuit of Solo. He knoweth well that Boba Fett doth worship at sweet compensation's throne, and would happily betray my own kin to earn the great reward that hath been promised. I would kill Solo without a thought. For what is he to me? Disintegrations, indeed. I would disintegrate, disembowel, dismember, destroy utterly Han Solo. For I know him not, nor care what he hath done to earn Darth Vader's ire, and the scorn of Jabba the Hutt. I shall play my bounty hunter's part, obey the Dark Lord, and take my prize from the Empire, and receive a second prize from the dunes of Tatooine. A double prize. Tis wonderful a bounty hunter to be. Piet to Vader. My lord, the ship hath been discovered. Exeunt, Darth Vader, Boba Fett, other bounty hunters, Admiral Piet, and Imperial Controller. Enter Han Solo, Chewbacca, Princess Leia, and C-3PO aboard the Millennium Falcon. Oh, praise the Maker! We are venturing out of the asteroid field and are alive! Miraculous! C-3PO, aside. I almost am convinced that Captain Solo bears a hero's air. Now let us hence. Chewbacca, art prepared for light speed? <laughs> now one, two, three, go. The Millennium Falcon makes a sound and fails. <laughs> it's not fair. I say, it's not just. C-3PO, Aside. A hero, did I say? Oh, man of folly. <laughs> the transfer circuits did not work. Tis not my fault. No light speed once again? Tis not my fault. In truth, tis not my fault. The rear deflector shield is compromised, and if we do sustain another hit upon the ship's back quarter, tis our end. On, aside. Tis madness. This maneuver I'll attempt, but despite all, but desperate times for desperate measures call. To Chewbacca. Thou turn this ship around. Mm. Turn it around. I shall put all our power to shields in front. Thou wilt attack a Star Destroyer? Uh, sir, the odds of our success in a direct attack upon a Star Destroyer... Tut. Exeunt, flying towards the Star Destroyer. Enter Captain Nita, Tracking Officer and Communications Officer. 
they move into attack position. Shields! But now, where are they gone? Pray, track them straight. That is impossible. No ship that small hath any ways or means to cloak itself. Nay, they cannot as magic disappear. Good Captain Nida, our Lord Vader doth demand an update of our keen pursuit. Nida, aside. Oh, dreaded moment. This shall mean my death. Farewell now, for my life's on with the ship. To communications officer. Prepare a shuttle for me. I'll accept the full responsibility for their escape. Shall apologize until Lord Vader. Keep thy watch most vigilant. Aye, Captain Nida. Exit tracking and communications officers. Enter Darth Vader as Captain Nita makes his way toward him. On thy gr mercy great I throw myself and all my hopes, dear lord. The great Millennium Falcon now is fled. It hath evaded our vast fleet. Take my apology. The ship is lost. Add thus thy life. Dead for a ducat. Dead. Darth Vader chokes Captain Nita with the Force, killing him. The necks of fools deserve a crushing force. Let this serve as thy dying lesson, Nita. With that last breath, thy recompense is done, and all apologies accepted. Enter Admiral Piet. Lord, our scan of the surrounding area is now complete, but has, alas, found naught. Lord, if the swift Millennium Falcon hath made good the jump to light speed, it may be beyond the far end of the galaxy. Alert thou every imperial post, and calculate the ship's most likely course from its trajectory as it did flee. Aye, Lord. I'll warrant we shall find them soon. Exit, Admiral Piet. Oh, ancestors, pray save me from these fools who with their instruments and scanners could not find a panther in a womp rat's hole. But calm thyself now, Vader, be at ease. This momentary failure may yet prove most beneficial, and I'll warrant that this time shall not go dully by us, for it shall be used to finalize my plans, and think upon the moment when I shall both meet and then defeat the Skywalker who dares call the Empire enemy. So let these rebels go for now, my soul, and ponder how to make their downfall whole. Exit. Scene 7. The Dagobah System. Enter Yoda, R2-D2, and Luke Skywalker, who practices lifting things with the Force. Use the Force, Luke, yes. Now lift thou the stone, feel it. The Force within flows. R2-D2 begins to beep as Luke's ship sinks. Nay, listen thou not to the droid and all his beeps. Do thou concentrate. Everything that was lifted falls. Fie! We shall never extricate the ship. So certain are you? Always with you, my pupil. It cannot be done. What have we done here? Hear'st thou nothing that I say? Dost thou attend, Luke? If depend upon the force thou shalt, Anything possible shall be. But master, moving stones with the great force, I do admit may be achieved. But this, this ship, to lift its hulk, its mass, its size, it is different, I wholly different. Nay, no different. Only within thy mind, Luke, different it is. Thou must unlearn all those things that thou hast learned. Dost thou understand? In truth, in truth, I understand, and I shall try. Nay, nay, try thou not. But do thou, or do thou not? For there is no try. Luke, aside. I shall, I shall stretch out my mind, and shall attempt, but this is madness. Lifting in a ship? The greatest Jedi still cannot achieve that which is patently impossible. Methinks no force can move this ship, and thus I certain am I shall never do this. 
Luke tries to lift the ship with the force, but the ship sinks lower. Nay, I cannot. Tis much too big. Nay, size matters not. Look thou at me, I prithee. Judge me by my size, and where you should not. For my ally tis the force, a powerful ally. Life doth create it, its energy surrounds us, binds us together. Luminous beings we are, not this crude matter. You must feel the force all around thee, here, between thou and me, tree, rock, everywhere it is, in between the land and your ever-sinking ship. The force is there too. I know now thou dost ask the impossible. Luke sits aside as Yoda lifts his hands. Yoda, aside. Be mindful, young one, and watch what inner strength great may come from small size. Yoda moves the ship out of the swamp using the Force. The ship? It, it cometh out? Thou hast done it? I ne'er imagined it was possible. With eyes I see, but mine does not believe. This is your error. Against the force do you rail. That is why you fail. Exeunt. Act 4. Scene 1. Aboard the Millennium Falcon, moored to a Star Destroyer. Enter Chorus. With such deep wit, Han hath the Empire tricked, that now the Falcon hides within its fleet. With skill he doth the Empire's moves predict, and bravely plants to make his moves discreet. Enter Han Solo, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, and C-3PO. I tell thee, Captain Solo, thou hast gone beyond all measure with this reckless move. Thou hast put all aboard in danger grave, and yet thou seems to have but little care. <laughs> Nay, I'll not be silent. Wherefore am I never listened to? The fleet doth break apart itself in break itself up into pieces. Go thee now, Chewbacca. Stand aside the manual release to liberate the landing claw. Mm. Exit Chewbacca. Truly I see not how that shall help. Surrender is, in circumstances such as these, a fair alternative. Perhaps the Empire may yet reasonable be. Leia turns off C-3PO. Great, thanks. I give thee for the gift of peace. Brave soul, what dost thou think thou shalt do next? Before these ships do from the fleet release, they should their garbage dump ere they pursue a jump to light speed. Then we'll float away. Thy ship with all the garbage, eh? Well said. And what then? We shall happily find our way unto a port where safety makes its bed. Pray dost thou know of any port like such? Mayhap I might, if I knew where we were. Anuat system, but doth that help much? Oh, the Anuat system, I aver, tis bleak. But hark, an interesting name my ship's computer showeth, Lando. Han? What Lando system? System, you exclaim. He's not a system. Lando is a man. As Lando of Calrissian, he's known. The man doth deal in cards, in gambling, and in scoundreling. The woods he type condone. Leia, aside. He chess with me as one in love's command. He is in Bespin, rather far but we may make it there. A colony? A mine? Tabana gas mine. I would wager he hath tain the mine that someone did call mine. This Lando hath a history long with me. But dost thou trust him? Nay, throat's right. 
but I believe we have no need of fear, for he no love doth harbor for the Empire, I. The ship shakes. Han speaks into his comm link. Prepare now, Chewie. Tis the time. Detach. The Millennium Falcon detaches from the Star Destroyer. Thou hast these moments that are unsurpassed. I, when thou hast them, they are without match. Not numerous are they, but I, thou hast. Leia kisses Han and exits with C-3PO. Tis said that sometimes those who knew us in our youth did know us best. From them we have no secrets and cannot pretend to be another thing than what we are. They keep our living honest, for they know who we have been, and such a man is Lando. He and I have known each other many years, so he doth know me from my smuggling past, the days when I did gamble, cheat, and fight, and often in that order too. He knew me ere I was with the rebellion joined. He knoweth what Han Solo once hath been. Thus he is primed uniquely to give aid unto a friend who now hath found a cause, a cause to join, a cause in to defend. O Lando, all our hopes, all our hopes are pinned on thee. What shall it be, old friend? I here take all. I have my ship, my mates, my one true love and stake it all on thee in our past. How shalt thee answer, O Calrigian? Will this, my wager, prove a foolish bet? How shall the deck unfold, the player's end? And in this dealing in my favor stacked, the player of the game is yet to be, but Lando, I do seek to win with thee. Exit. Enter, Boba Fett. A smuggler's ways are ere unchanging and predictable. Thou hast let the Millennium Falcon go out with the refuse, Solo, but I refuse to let thee play a jade's trick and go thy merry way. Thy course shall I pursue, and aim the best, for my ship is swift of flight unlike thy tired and aged falcon. To the last I'll grapple with thee, and in the heart of Bespin make thee cold with fright. The Fett doth promise it, and it shall be. Exit, Boba Fett. Scene 2, The Degabus System. Enter Yoda, R2-D2, and Luke Skywalker doing a handstand and lifting things with the Force. Now concentrate, Luke. Feel the Force, how it doth flow. Be calm. At peace, yes? When you use the Force, the Force in your soul begins. New paths to open. Through the Force, your mind shall see future things, things past. Friends nearer and yon. Alas, my mind doth see. Tis Leia! Han! Everything drops as Luke concentration breaks. Nay, be in control! Thou must be on all else, Luke! Have control entire! O oh, vision most horrendous and most drear! A city in the clouds, most beautiful, beneath a golden sun, as though twere heaven. But hidden just beneath its luster doth a harsh and painful nightmare lurk. I saw, beneath a sky of orange-hued array, dear Leia weeping at some cruel, dark thing. She will not be consoled from her great loss. And Han, his screams do echo in mine ears. Such cries of suffering I ne'er have heard. What signs are these? What ghosts of future hurt? What doth the Force attempt to show me? Oh, tell me, Master. Tell me plain, I pray. Shall Han and Leia die? Is that their fate? Hmm. A future sight, this. Hard to see is the future. Tis air in motion. I understand tis hard for thee to see, but harder yet the vig vision echoes in my head and reaches deep within my soul. If thou canst not give reassurance they are safe and shall safe be, tis I who must ensure the same. I will not idly stand by whilst they suffer many agonies. My mind is settled. I must thither go. Dost thou must, how thou shalt truly serve them best. Mayhap you may help, but also shalt thou sacrifice all for which they shall fight and suffer. But master, tell me what then I should do. Wouldst thou allow my friends to suffer thus? 
Wouldst thou accept the future's hard to see? Wouldst thou ignore the screams within thy brain? Yoda, aside. <sighs> the boy doth not hear. His friend's fates I cannot see. But his looketh bleak. Convince him I must. Else he shall suffer greatly. And loss is our hope. To Luke. Go not, I prithee. The training must thou complete. To my words, listen. The vision shall not, will not leave my head. And now I witness Leia in her torment, and Han, alone, as if upon some isle. In brave Chewbacca cries for what is lost. These signs can only equal tragedy. They are my friends, and I must fly with haste, or, or else I, I'll warrant all of them may die. Enter ghost of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Thou canst know of this, Luke. Yin Yoda doth not have the power their final fates to see. But I, but I may help them now. I feel the force. To see is one thing. To control is yet another. Dangerous this moment is for thee. For thou shalt be sore tempted in thy rage toward the dark side of the force. Yes, to Obi-Wan, thou must listen. The cave, Luke, recall thy failure. But truly, I have learned so much since then. I know what I must watch for and beware. I know how tempted by the dark I'll be. I know this and shall therefore guard my soul. I tell thee, Master Yoda, I'll return and finish all my training. This I vow. Pray, open up thine eyes. Tis thee and thine abilities the Emperor desires. They are the bait, and thou art the claw, Colo Claw. Thou art the fish, and the Emperor would catch. Thy friends do suffer only for thy sake, so that through them thou mayst easily be drawn in. And that is why I have to go. Present unto the Emperor the fish, and rest assured the bait is off the hook. O oh, Luke, I would not lose thee as I lost Darth Vader. His betrayal made my life a bleak and tragic thing. Thy loss unto the dark would make my death a hellish, cold eternity. I shall return, dear Ben. My training thus far shall suffice. It is enough. I stand prepared to face the dark. Hmm. Stopped they must be. On this depends everything. But pray, attend me. Only a fully trained Jedi may defeat Vader and his lord. If thou leavest now, and here to end thy training, thou art choosing ease. And once on the path of ease and hate, like Vader, thou mayst become, Luke. Attend to Yoda's wisdom, Luke, and stay. Oh, exercise thy patience, worthy lad. And in the waiting, sacrifice my friends? Is that the choice that ye would have me make? This hard indeed is. But if thou honor the thing for which they fight, yes. If thou dost choose to face Darth Vader, thou shalt be alone. I cannot interfere. I understand, and have been fully warned. My mind is set. Good R2, do prepare. Fire up the ship's converters. We depart. Oh, do not give unto hate, dear Luke. In doing so, the dark side shall thou find. Obi-Wan, aside. Indeed, I once did see it happen thus. Strong as Darth Vader, remember what thou hast learned. For save thee, it can. I shall, and shall return. You have my word. Exeunt Luke and R2-D2. Hmm. Mourned thee I have. He a reckless spirit hath. Now matters are worse. That boy is our first, last, and greatest hope. Exit ghost of Obi-Wan Kenobi. But nay, tis not so. For another yet there is. One more hope for us. Oh, how this plagues me. 
The boy for training hath come, but too soon is fled. A young bird he is, too eager the nest to leave, yet trying to fly. But young birds fly not. Their wings still too fragile are. Instead, they do fall. And fall, this one shall. But how far, how fast, how long? Time only shall tell. Little bird, be safe. If thou the nest seest again, I shall meet thee then. Exit Yoda. Scene 3. Bespin, the Cloud City. Enter Han Solo, Chewbacca, Princess Leia, and C-3PO, attempting to land the Millennium Falcon in the city, speaking with Guard 1 via comlink. Nay, nay, good sir. As I've said before, I have no permit that shall let me pass, but Lando of Calrissian I seek. Thou shall not enter upon Vespin, nay. Why does that fire on me, on me and my good ship? But not so quick to turn to blasters, sir. I have prithee, grant me time to, but to explain. Make thou no deviation from thy course. These Bespinites are rather petulant. They've nothing of my disposition, sweet. I thought that thou didst they say thou knowest this man, Lando. <laughs> Twas so long ago. Nay, surely he doth hold no grudge now. Thou hast permission now to land upon the platform two, three, two, seven. Many thanks. Now do you see, doubters all, I tell you truly, Lando is a friend, indeed. Nay, who hath worried? Leia, aside. Verily there is a something here that seemeth not all right. This welcome hath been less than welcoming, yet Han, with brave nobility, hath led our troubled quest. I shall no not doubt him now. The Millennium Falcon lands, and Han Solo, Princess Leia, and C-3PO disembark. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is no one to meet us here. I do not like this, Han. And what wouldst thou like? At least we are no more upon the ship. Enough of space I've seen to last a life. Twas kind of them to let us land. Be calm. Trust me, all things shall end well. Enter Lando with Lobot and guards. My friend! To Chewbacca. Keep thou watch now, Chewie, just in case. Lando, aside. How shall I play this? Shall I distant be? Nay, then he shall become suspicious and may have some cause to fear ere Vader comes. I shall be jovial and shine with joy. My cult is ridden best by kindly rider. I know tis true, it worketh every time. Thus, to deceive, I shall employ a jest. To Han. Thou slimy, double-crossing, no-good swine, thou hast a nerve to show thy cheating face, since thou hast proven thyself a lying thief. Is this possible? Is friendship's memory slain? Hey ho, I mock at thee, my goodly friend. How art thou, pirate? Tis a joy to see thee here. He doth seem full of friendship's mirth. Aye, truly, he seems full of it indeed. What brings thee here to Bespin? Ship repairs. Methought thou couldst some kind assistance grant? What hast thou done unto my ship? Thy ship? Remember, thou dost lose her over to me, as fairly as the day is long. And how dost thou, Chewbacca? Hangst thou still around this aging renegade? Lando, to Leia. Oh, what light doth break upon mine eyes? What beauty is this? I give thee welcome, gentle lady. I am Lando of Calrissian, and do administer this great facility. And who, pray tell, art thou, eh? 
Leia, I. Lando kisses Leia's hand. Most welcome, Leia. Aye, tis well, tis well. Thou art, thou art ever wert a lover of fair things. C-3PO and I, and at your service! Lando turns his back. C-3PO, aside. I wonder that I am still talking here. Nobody marks me. What doth fail the ship? Hyperdrive. My people shall be work on it immediately. I tell thee, that ship in many cases saved my life. What stories of adventure I could tell in which the ship doth play the central part. She is the fastest heap of scrap in all the galaxy. Leia, aside. He loveth this old ship almost as much as Han. This love of ships, tis like an illness wild within these men. Now tell me of thy life and business, friend. How does the gas mine for thee? Doth it pay? Tis credits in and credits out, but more I fear of out than in. We are but small, an outpost miner. Thus I have supply dilemmas, labor difficulties, too. <laughs> what sayst thou, ha, and wherefore twice? Tis thou. Pray, hearken unto thine own voice, so rife with deep responsibility, so serious, experienced, mature, and businesslike. Twas not my expectation. Lando, aside. Oh, weep my heart to see him bring such joy, and pains me more to seal his awful fate. To Han. Pray, hear me truly, Han. Whatever else may happen, hear these words. This moment doth recall for me our past together, which is sweetness in my memory. Indeed. Tis well to see thee thriving so, my friend. And thou hast hit the mark. I duties bear, and grave responsibilities are mine. But tis the price of one success, I suppose. Exeunt Han Solo, Chewbacca, Princess Leia, and Lando. Enter another 3PO droid. What joy to see a kind, familiar face. It's your Exit 3PO droid. Oh, how rude. But pray, what's here? C-3PO enters another room. Was that an R2 unit sound I heard? Is it possible that R2-D2's here? Hello? Who is herein? Enter a shadowy figure. Sai, who art thou? Alas, this is my end and enemy. If only I could others tell. Oh, me! Exit as C-3PO is shot into pieces. Enter Princess Leia. Time's passage hath not soothed my mind's distress. Full many moments we have waited here within this lovely city in the clouds. Yet I am neither rested nor relaxed. Foreboding doth creep o'er me like a plague. My mind is sore affaired, my hands do shake, and nowhere can my troubled soul find peace. The quick permission gives us to land. Given us to land. The too familiar welcome Lando gave. The small apartment offered for our use, it seems as though we were expected here. Though how this could have happened, I know not. For surely when the Imperial fleet broke up, we in the opposite direction flew. But even beyond that worry, there is more. For though I do not love the prating droid, C-3PO has not been seen since our arrival here. We have too much of quiet. I almost miss his constant chattering. Enter Han Solo. All shall be well. The ship is fixed with care. There are but two or three things more. Then we'll, we will make our swift departure hence. Tis fair? The swiftest shall be best. Something is still awry. Where is C-3PO? He hath not seen us or been seen for many hours, and no one knows his way or path. H hath he lost his faithful droid droidly sense? Most happily would I, would I by him be annoyed, if it mean that he at least were near. Uh, I'll sh I shall inquire of Lando about the droid, but in the meantime, Leia, have no fear. I trust not Lando. Neither sweet do I, yet he's my friend who helpeth us, dost see? I warrant that we soon from here shall fly. 
then thou shalt take thy flight as well from me. The future has its own time yet to write, and where it's or not we worry, my good lass, it comes as sure as day doth follow night. So think not of all it till, wait, so think not of it till it comes to pass. Exeunt Han Solo and Princess Leia. Enter a merry band of Ugnaughts, singing as they pass around parts of C-3PO's body. Oh, pass me that. Oh, give me this. We Ugnaughts are working. Oh, pass the head. Give me the chest. Our duties are never shirking. Thou naughty droid. Thou hast been cut. The prying never ceases. Your lesson learned. Our treasures end, for now thou art in pieces. Enter Chewbacca. <laughs> Chewbacca begins collecting pieces of C-3PO. Take not the arms. Please pray leave the legs. Thy greed thou art revealing. But naught shall last. For nothing doth. Our treasures thou art stealing. So shall we speak? A proverb true, with voices loudly ringing. It easy came, and easy goes. But still we keep on singing. Exeunt Ugnaughts singing. Enter Han Solo and Princess Leia. I see, Chewbacca, thou hast found the droid. At least some small, varied parts of him. Oh, what hath happened? Thou hast found him upon a junk pile? What? How can that be? C-3PO was fine when we arrived, but now I fear he is more dread than droid. Tis such a mess. Canst thou repair him, good Chewbacca? <laughs> Lando's people can provide the cure. Nay, thank you. I'd not have it. Enter Lando. Forgive me, worthy guests. Do I intrude? Nay, verily. Oh, but thou art a beauty, I pray thee never leave. Thou dost belong with us in our great city in the clouds. Thy loveliness doth put the sun to shame, the brightness of their cheek would shame the stars. Leia, aside. This scoundrel too familiar is. Now do I see that though I once thought Han uncouth, he is the sweetest smuggler ever lived. Leia, to Lando. Thou hast my thanks. Now come, will you join me for some repast? Chewie, Chewie, fear thou not. Be sure I meant that all invited are. Is there, notices C is there some manner with your droid? Nay, I know not of any matter. They walk, leaving C-3PO's parts. Tell me, though, as we proceed to supper... Art thou an accepted member of the Mining Guild? Nay, we are none. Our operation is still small enough that we may be discreet. Tis advantageous to our customers, for they are anxious to escape attention. Leia, aside. Oh, all this talk of business, minds, and stealth. My mind cannot abide, but abide it, for I sense that terrible event shall so soon befall. Within my mind, a vision of some pain begins to form but it is still indistinct. Would that I had some time to clear my thoughts. Han to Lando. But art thou not afraid the Empire shall find out about your operation and then drive you out of business, or even worse? To there a danger that looms over us and all that we have built in Bespin's walls, but things have just developed which will make our future safe and well secure. A deal I've made with the Empire made that shall keep them far distant from our operations. They arrive at a door and open it. Enter Darth Vader and Boba Fett revealed inside. <laughs> On a side. But what is this? Betrayal? Hands, take flight. My blaster shall I use and save us yet. Han fires but Vader deflects the blast and uses the force to take Han's lightsaber. We would be honored should you join us here. I am most sorry, worthy friend. They did arrive in Bespin ere thou did, here didst fly. No sorrier I do expect than I. Exeunt. Scene 4. 
Bespin, the Cloud City. Enter Guards 1 and 2. Oi, well met, worthy friend. What dost thou hear? I have been poring over our city's plans. What's this? A newfound interest? Shalt thou turn architect? Nay, nay, and yet I have found something curious. Indeed? Indeed. Pray tell. The city hath been built within the Empire's strict specifications for design and building standards. Aye, twas wise. Thus may the best bin council never have a reason for their empire sharp inspectors. Verily, but follow on. That they unto the code the city built is not the thing I found strange. Instead, it was the code's requirements I did mark. For didst thou know the empire doth require that any major structure shall include at least one chasm that's deep and long and dark? Not only shall these chasms exist, the code doth further specify that they shall be abutting pathways where pedestrians may walk. The Death Star that was built some years ago had, evidently, several of these holes, and our Cloud City has them too. Is not this strange? I know them well, and did go walking past just to get such a gaping hole that led to nothing but yesterday. But wherefore dost thou say to strange, I pray? It simply maketh little sense to put such vast, deep holes in every structure next to well-worn paths. Could not a person, by some simple misstep, fall most easily down one of these great chasms? So wherefore place such hazards into every structure built? I see your reasoning, but shall reboot. The Empire is greatest strength I own, own, tis true? Of course, I'd not say otherwise. And any great thing, person, beast, or realm, doth put its greatness on display, agreed? Tis natural, I'll warrant. Pray, say on. I posit that the Empire doth command that structures have these chasms immense because it is their... in. It is through their immensity that our great empire strength is shown, and since they are vast holes that deadly are, should one fall in, they send a message strong and clear to all. The empire is a proud and mighty power, and doth not fear sure death, but laughs at it. Hi, faith, we are so full of life that we walk by our certain passing daily. It is but qu quotidian for us, and yet we have no fear. Thy point is clearly made, but still, I think it is strange that this is true. A structure is not whole till it hath holes. Such things lie far beyond my understanding, yet I do trust there is a master plan. Shall we to supper, friend? Forsooth, lead on. Exit guards one and two and the fourth wall. Enter Lando. Oh, what is this dire sound I just have heard? My friend Han Solo screaming in great pain, the shrieks of man turned victim through my fault, my quick decision to protect myself. Yet, what choice had I, could I else have done? No person in my place would differently behave. No choice had I but one, to save myself, my interests, and my beloved Cloud City from a dark and awful fate. Yet ever shall my soul be haunted by these dismal howls of my old friend, unless I can find some way to make recompense. But how shall that error be whilst Vader threats do cast their shadows over my every move? I know not how, but yet it must be so. I shall, be like with loyal Lobot's help, discover yet a way to make this right, and save myself from a betrayer's name. Enter Lobot, Darth Vader, and Boba Fett. Vader to Boba Fett. Thou mayst take Captain Solo and transport him unto Jabba once Skywalker has arrived and captured me. So, is that clear? Tis, my lord. But Solo is no good to me, should he be dead upon delivery. He hath been tortured severely in this last hour. Tis well, but I prithee do not kill the man ere I deliver him to Jabba. No harm beyond undoing Charlie Bear. Lord Vader, do I understand this fully? Thou shalt surrender Han unto this man, this bounty hunter here? So what is next? I pray thee, tell me, what shall happen to both Leia and the Wookiee? Never shall they leave the city. This doth push the bounds too far. Imprisonment was never a condition of the bargain we did make, and twas not the plan to hand o'er Han unto this bounty hunter. Mayhap thou dost think thou hast been... Unfairly treated? Lando, aside. A threat in his voice and aspect. To Vader. Nay, for I shall model flexibility. 
says, well, it would be a pity should I feel it necessary to retain a full and armored garrison in Bespin. Exeunt, Darth Vader, and Boba Fett. He orders what he will, sans sense or rhyme. This deal is worse becoming all the time. Exeunt. Scene 5. Bespin, the Cloud City. Enter Chewbacca with C-3PO's parts in the process of reassembling the droid. Stormtroopers in Bespin? I am shot! <clears throat> oh, tis better. That is quite improved. But hold, for something is not right. My eyes, I cannot see. Chewbacca makes adjustments. Now that is mended, I. Yet wait, I now am backward. Head is back, and front's reverse, and all has gone awry. Is this a Wookiee's notion of a joke? Thou stupid, senseless beast! <laughs> Thou furball wretched, mophead ignorant! Chewbacca switches off C-3PO. Enter Han Solo, carried by stormtroopers, who drop him and exit. <laughs> oh, Chewie, I'm in agony. My every bone and sinew cries with pain. Enter Princess Leia. What have they done to you, my noble man, and what can they, their purpose, dost thou know? Twas torture, unlike any I have known. For never any questions did they ask. Instead, with silent mouths and darting eyes, they fixed me solidly unto a seat and lowered me into a mechanism. At first, was like a searing heat that racked my f from skin to bone and back again. Then sparks flew out upon my chest and neck and face. Such fire as though a hundred blasters spread their shots across my body, or perhaps as though a million tiny lightsabers did prick and dance their way about my skin. All this they did, but ne'er made inquiry. Ne'er asked me whence we came or where we go. Nera asked about the rebels' rendezvous. No information did they seek to know. Only seemed they wished to bring me pain. I tell thee, t'was far worse and terrible than if they had sought answers from my blood. But this is, but this demented evil shakes my soul. For wherefore torture without questioning? Enter Lando with guards. <laughs> Get thee hence now, Lando. Tut, attend my voice, for this ye both should hear. Darth Vader have given word that he will turn both Leia and Chewbacca o'er to me. What does that mean, o'er to me, thou knave? I would not turn a rival o'er to thee, much less the ones beloved by my heart. They must stay here, but will at least be safe. T'was not my choice, I have no say in this. Tis Vader who doth pull the strings, and we are but the puppets with which he doth play. And what of Han? Darth Vader shall give him o'er to the bounty hunter. Vader doth desire that all of us are dead. He wants you not at all. He searches for someone called Skywalker. Aye, Luke. That means Luke. Darth Vader, uh, Lord Vader set a trap for him to fall. And we are but the bait by which he's caught. The trap shall soon be sprung, for Skywalker is on his way in now. This villainy, thou hast arranged it all to perfect fay. Han Solo strikes Lando, but is quickly restrained by guards. <laughs> Cease, I have done all that I may do, for certain I am sorry I could not do better yet than this, but I do have enough vexations here. Oh, thou great man, thou art a hero, and thy tale shall err upon the lips of lesser folk be told. Throughout all history it shall be writ, Behold, great Lando of Calrissian, a man who e'er served his comrades well. Lando, aside. This stings my soul, yet no more can I do than hold my head up high and plan what's next. Exeunt Lando and guards. My soldier, oh my heart, thy fire doth blaze. 
Thy skill with other never doth cease to amaze. Exeunt. Act 5. Scene 1. Bespin, the Cloud City. Enter Ugnaughts 1, 2, and 3, singing. The time is ripe. His time is nigh. And soon he will be frozen. We've never done this on a man. But now someone's been chosen. A merry prank. Oh, shall it work? Oh, will the man be dying? What hair befall? One thing is sure. The pleasure's in the trying. Exeunt Ugnaughts. Enter Lando, Lobot, Darth Vader, and Boba Fett. A perfect touch this is to free Skywalker. The plan is perfect. He who hath destroyed the Death Star shall be packaged as a gift. But now, let us inspect the details. Aye, this crude contraption should be adequate for put, to put this vexing Skywalker on ice ere his delivery to the Emperor. Enter Imperial Soldier. Lord Vader, there's a ship that doth approach. An X-Wing class. Tis well. Watch Skywalker. Allow his landing. Let him hit it come. Exit Imperial Soldier. Lord Vader, this facility has ne'er been used for humans, only carbon freezing. If thou dost put him in this vast machine, it may not freeze him, but may mean his death. This is a point I considered not. It seems, Calrissian, that thou dost learn to be obedient unto thy lord. Tis well, and it is in thine interest. I do not wish him harmed. The emperor shall not enjoy a damaged prize. So, shall another stand for him to be a test? We shall make Captain Solo undergo the freezing process first, to test its power. My lord, although his death would bring me joy, it doth not pay. Jabba, like thine emperor, giveth no fees for damaged goods. I prithee, what shall happen if the man doth die? What then for Boba Fett? Fear not, thy aunt shall have its bounty still. Thou shalt be compensated if he dies. Enter Han Solo, Chewbacca, Princess Leia, and C-3PO attached to Chewbacca's back, all guarded. C-3PO to Chewbacca. I am almost fully restored to my old self, except thy work is not complete. If thou had but attached my legs, I would not yet remain in this position rare. I prithee, good Chewbacca, do recall that I am thy responsibility. Do not in any instance foolish be. <sighs> On to Lando. Pray tell, O oh dearest friend, what is at hand? Thou shalt be placed in a total carbon freeze. On, aside. The news of my grim fate doth chill my blood. Oh, how I once thought Hoth was cold and bleak, yet now I pine for all its balmy plains. Now, put him in. <laughs> Chewbacca fights guards and slays three of them. Chewie, stop, I pray. Alas, yes, stop! I am not set to die! This cannot help me, brave Chewbacca. Nay, I prithee, save thy strength to fight again. Attend me now, the princess. Thou must be her strength, her stay, her guard, her confidence. These things that I no longer can bestow. Oh, I do love thee, holy Han. I know. Han is placed into the machine and emerges in a frozen block. Pray turn around, Chewbacca. Let me see. Oh, he in carbonite hath been encased. He should be well protected. If he hath survived the freezing process... Make report, Calrissian. Is he alive? He is, and rests in perfect hibernation here. The prize is thine now, bounty hunter Fett. Take him to Jabba, with my gratitude. Fett. Aside. Aye, prize indeed, and worthy of the wait. To Tatooine I fly with expectation of payment great. Reset the chamber for young Skywalker. He shall the next to freezing undergo. Enter Imperial Soldier. Skywalker's ship hath just made landing, Lord. Tis well. 
and be thou sure he hither comes. Put him upon the path that leads him here. Exit Imperial Soldier. Calrissian, take thou the princess and the Wookiee to my ship, and there remain. Nay, thou didst say they would in best spend well, with me under my supervision keen. How canst thou bargain thus? Tis always thy side of the deal that doth improve. What shalt thou give me to make this deal worthwhile? <laughs> Seek not to deal thyself a willing hand. The Empire shall ne'er not e'er play by thy rules. By my command the deal is altered, and in all thy orisons thou mayst yet feed the deal no further altered will be. Exit Darth Vader and Boba Fett. Chewbacca and Princess Leia sing a song of lament. <laughs> Full fathom five, my letter lies within an icy tomb. Thy saying yet live, yet my heart dies. Sing, washer, washer, washer. Now he is gone, and so's my life all frozen in. He my sees loved one I his strive. Sing worship, worship, worship. Exeunt. Scene two. Bespin, the Cloud City. Enter Luke Skywalker with R2-D2 behind. Yes, now am I in Bespin. More fool I. For though my feelings say this is the place, I know not yet for certain if it be. My friends I have not heard from hide nor hair, and yet the force doth call in clearest tones as if to say, Here lies thy destiny. Luke sees Bespin guards carrying Han Solo. But wait, what's this? Procession most sincere, and with such maimed rites, this doth betoken the corpse they follow was an enemy. These Bespin guards do make odd pallbearers. The scene is verily a sign of ill. Enter Boba Fett, shooting at Luke. Luke shoots back. Exit Boba Fett. Aha! It seems that I expected am. This then must be the place my vision saw. The force hath led me here by prophet's hand. I shall pursue the fiend most ardently. Belike he shall lead me unto my mates. Exit Luke and R2-D2. Enter Chewbacca, Princess Leia, and Lando, with guards and Boba Fett. These blasts and great commotion indicate Skywalker's recent advent onto Bespin. This great upheaval his appearance makes doth grant me the diversion that I seek to call upon my man-at-arms for help. Lando presses buttons on his wrist communicator. Enter Luke Skywalker and R2-D2. Boba Fett shoots again. Oh, Luke, pray fly! Tis but a trap! A trap! Flee now, dear friend, ere thou art captured too! But what is this? Tis Leia in distress! Yet here, beset by blasts, I'll not prevail. Exit Luke Skywalker under fire, with R2-D2 behind him. Exit Boba Fett. Enter Lobot with armed battalion. <laughs> Aye, well done, my aid. Pray, put them in the tower most secu secure, and be ye quiet. Lobbit silently nods. Exeunt Lobbit with battalion and imperial guards. Leia, aside. Oh, will he play the hero now? A fig. To Lando. 
What is in thy imagination, man? We shall depart at once. He releases the bands from Chewbacca's hands. C-3PO aside. I knew twas thus a regular misunderstanding. Chewbacca begins to choke Lando. I had no choice. What is this foolishness? Pray trust him. Aye, we understand, thou knave. Thou does neither have choice nor will to act, thou brute. Imperial officers act by their lord's command and blind obedience. The bounty hunter is well paid for his nefarious actions, and even Darth Vader and the Emperor are fully driven by their power. I, but shalt thou say thou hadst no choice? What lily-livered weak excuse is this? At least assume thy stature as a man, and here confess thy shameful deeds. We'll give the opportunity to fess thy wrongs before thou diest at Chewie's hand. I did but try to help. We do not need thy help, thou hoarse and senseless villain. Han! What did thou say? It sounded like a Han. That may yet be a chance we can save Han. The bounty hunter's ship. The platform, east! Pray, Chewie, let him go! Chewbacca releases Lando. He and Princess Leia begin to walk away, followed by Lando. My ferventest apologies for this, good sir. See, he is but a Wookiee, ignorant and plain. Enter Boba Fett on balcony, with guards and the frozen body of Han Solo. Now put him in the cargo hold. Who now hath been victorious, Solo? Who is the winner clear? And as the victor, so go the spoils. Jabba's bounty and his great pleasure shall I enjoy when I arrive with thee on Tatooine. I shall become a courtier in the Palace of the Huts ere this is through. Boba Fett, triumphant. Exeunt Boba Fett and guards. Enter R2-D2, aside. I have been separated from my master, yet happy circumstance, for here I see the others and may now rejoin them. 2C-3PO. <laughs> Oh, R2! R2, say, where hast thou been? It does be well to see thee, little droid. Yet prithee, haste thee, for we all now strive to save our captain from the clutches of the bounty hunter. <laughs> At least thou art still in one piece. Observe my sad, fragmented fate. They arrive at the east platform to see Boba Fett's ship flying away. Leia, aside. Oh, flown alack! My Han, his body flown and fled. Now break my heart and weep mine eyes. A princess I may be, but first and foremost, a human with emotions that betrayed my higher sense. Oh, gracious Han, forgive me that I did not come to thee late, and only then did to lose thee. I'll find thee in the stars, my Han. I'll search the galaxy until I find thee. Oh! Pray, Chewie, look! They come behind thee! <laughs> Enter stormtroopers from behind, who battle with Chewbacca, Princess Leia, and Lando. The stormtroopers miss all of their marks and are slain. The soldiers are dispatched. Now, let us go. A princess doth command thee. Lando, make thy choice once and for all whom thou shalt serve. Wilt thou remain the Empire Stooge, or shalt thou go with us to serve the Rebellion's cause? Good lady, this demand is fairly made. Forgive me of the things I've done, I pray, and I shall fly with thee and serve thee true. But first, let me a final action take to serve the Bespinites I love so well. One moment for the greater good. Lando speaks into his cobbling, broadcasting to the whole of Bespin. Hear ye, tis Lando of Calarissian who speaks. The Empire doth control the city now. I do advise ye all evacuate at once before more troops arrive within. Lando tries to open a door and fails. This door shall lead us to the Falcon, but the codes have changed. I know not how. R2, thou cast override the door security. Pray R2, speed thee. 
R2-D2 tries to plug into the computer and gets shocked. Oh, blame me not. I am interpreter and know not power socket from computer. More stormtroopers enter and begin to shoot at Chewbacca, Princess Leia, and Lando. Now under siege again, oh, let us hence, away unto the Falcon. Droid, canst thou release the doors that we may pass and fly? If ever a droid were worthy, R2 is. Go for it, R2. Make our good escape. We do not care about the hyperdrive. The great Millennium Falcon is repaired. R2-D2, aside. Fie, this computer tells me all's not well. But how shall I convey this midst these blasts? The doorway first, the hyperdrive shall wait. To R2-D2. Pray, open the door, thou stupid lump. The door opens. Oh, R2, I never did doubt thee. Thou art wonderful. Exeunt R2-D2, Lando, and Chewbacca with C-3PO into the Millennium Falcon. I know that I should fly, and yet for Han's sake I would stay and slay each enemy that cometh from within. Love unfulfilled turns quickly into spite, and vengefulness doth fill the empty place within my heart. Oh, die a thousand times, ye beasts who fed upon my love. Oh, brutes ye think, not one of the lives ye take. You are but the senseless minions who fulfill the sordid whims of your imperial lords. Be tis not your fault, for you are but a merciless, vile emperor controlled. Yet I shall strike at you till you do fall, for every pain that you have given to me. The loss of Alderaan, of my great friends, and now the loss of my beloved one. Oh, die, ye mindless men of empire cruel! I shall upon the empire be revenged, till my gallant Han hath be avenged. Exit Princess Leia. Scene 3. Bespin, the Cloud City. Enter Luke Skywalker. Where am I now? And where are all my friends? Some wrong turn have I taken, and now am lost. With a cavern, dark and filled with mist. Our two is left behind. I am alone. What evil lurks within this passage bleak? What fate shall I discover in this place? What power hath brought me here? Is it the Force? I if not, what messenger of darkness vile hath given me up unto this realm of fear? The cold I feel is as on Dagobah, when in the cave my darkest self I faced. The thoughts I thought therein do now return. The questions that did rise and give me pause. Oh, what is life? And what our purpose here? Are living creatures made for pain and strife? Do we but walk our days upon the ground to perish without memory or fame? If so, what shall we seek whilst we yet live? Is brave adventure worthy of our time, or should we seek the principle of pleasure? Are family and children noble aims, or is the force itself our holy goal? Is life a quest, or is it but a farce? A splendid journey or a fool's crusade? Such questions plague my soul and make me doubt. They draw my mind toward the darkest thoughts that ere I've ever since I became a man. And here, away from Dagobah, I have no firm assurance of my safety, nor the comfort of my master being here. Thus shall I face my fortune by myself, without my mentors great to give me help. The thought doth bring me trepidation, for I have relied upon their counsel wise. Be with me here in spirit, if not in form, good Obi-Wan and Yoda, masters true. O life, O fate, I would I knew my place, my time, my end, my destiny complete. But I cannot see why or how life is, because the past is not a perfect guide. And since the future still remains unknown, my fate shall I meet in the present sense. A sound is heard. But soft, 
I hear slow footsteps drawing near. Enter Darth Vader. The force is strong with thee now, young Skywalker, in truth. But thou art not a Jedi yet. Luke, aside. Tis Vader and tis fate. Let it begin. They duel. O mighty duel! O action ne'er surpassed! The lightsabers do clash and glow like fire. Darth Vader in the villain's main role is cast, while Luke's young temper turneth soon to ire. They flash and fly like dancers in a set, yet never dance did know such deadly mood. Luke tries, and soon his brow begins to sweat, while Vader doth attack with strength renewed. Forsooth, young one, tis plain thou hast learned much. Thou shalt find me full of surprises yet. Thy destiny doth lie with me, Skywalker. Your teacher, Obi-Wan, did know it was true. Thou liest, O thou villain cruel and cold. They duel, and Luke falls into the carbonite freezing machine. Vader, aside. It was far too simple trapping him within. Perhaps the boy is not as powerful as my great emperor, and I did think. Luke leaps out of the carbon freezing machine. I am not captured yet, thou lord of hate. Thou must another evil scheme derive to catch me in thy snares, for I am quick, and move with all the power of the force. Impressive. Most impressive, worthy lad. Then everyone hath taught thee well, and thou hast mastered all thy fears. Now go. Release thine anger, for thy hate alone can strike me down. Darth Vader, aside. Now tis the moment to provoke his inner rage. Come walls, machines, and parts, and come at him from every side. He'll be made weak, and in his weakness, darkness, find. Darth Vader uses the Force to strike Luke with nearby objects. Alas, I fall. O oh, fate be on my side. Luke falls out a window. Battle goes exactly as foreseen. The boy is powerful and skilled, it is true, but his young powers are no match for mine. It seems that Obi-Wan was weak with age. This boy's training is still incomplete. He shall be turned yet, for I still hold the news that shall undo him utterly. He thinks the speed of my lightsaber and my power to send objects hurtling at him are the worst I can muster. But my greatest weapon shall yet shall break his soul, not touch his body. <laughs> he shall know the truth. But even as I plan to share with him the story of his fall, I must pause. The strange confusion I felt I before have felt hath come again into my mind. What is? I know no better fate for him and me than would to be joined in service to my lord and emperor. So why am I confused? Enough of this now, Vader. Finish it. The boy be shall turn, or he shall be destroyed. Exit Darth Vader. Luke begins to climb through the window. Oh, pain. Oh, bitter weariness. I did not know the power of the Force till now, till it to purpose rank was turned on me. Now, for my very life, I grasp and hold unto the precipice whereupon I cling. Be with me now, O Ben. Restore my strength. I see what Vader hath tamed flight, yet it is plain he doth but wait for his next chance. Some hope remains in now amidst my fear. He may yet be defeated. All's not lost. I have regained my footing and may rest until the fight must be resumed. Now, quick. Look deep within your heart, Luke, and recall the teachings of your gentle master, Yoda. Breathe deeply and call upon the Force, that it may show to thee the path that thou must take. Oh, give me strength to win this battle now, or if not win, maintain my sense of right. But lo, Darth Vader cometh once again. Enter Darth Vader. They duel, and Luke is forced to the edge of a deep cavern. This is the end for thee, Skywalker. See, thou art defeated now. Resistance would be futile. Let yourself not be destroyed as Obi-Wan did, weak old man that he was. They duel. 
Darth Vader cuts off Luke's right hand with his lightsaber. Oh, horror! Oh, vast pain exceeding words! Thou shalt find no escape. Do not make me destroy thee. Great importance shalt thou have within the Empire's power, and thine own shall only grow with time. I prithee, join with me, and I your training shall complete. When our strength is combined, we shall conclude this bitter conflict and bring order to the galaxy entire. I shall, I never shall. Join with thee. I would rather be destroyed. Vader, aside. The boy doth admirably keep his head. But now I shall unleash the final blow. To Luke. If thou but noose the power of the dark side, Obi-Wan hath never told thee of what happened to thy father, Luke. Oh, he hath spoken much, and he hath told me of the truth, that thou didst slay him, I, and without cause or mercy murder most vile and wretched. No, I am thy father. Nay, tis not true. It is impossible. Pray search thy feelings, Luke. Thou knowest it is true. Nay! Luke, thou mayest the Emperor destroy. He hath foreseen what thou wouldst do. It is thy destiny. Come join with me. Together we shall rule the galaxy as son and father. Come now, Luke. It is the only way. The dark side is thy path. Oh, join with me, and we shall be as one. Luke looks down and drops into the cavern. I fall, and yet no death's upon me yet. I fall, for tis a better fate than, for tis a better path than hate. He falls and welcomes death instead of power. He falls, but I can sense he liveth still. I have not died, but pass into this shaft. I have not died, though I may wish it so. He hath not died. His heart screams in its fear. He hath not died, so may he yet be turned. Luke falls onto a weather vane at the bottom of the shaft. I am held fast by this vane or the clouds. I am held fast by some miraculous power. He is held fast from the dark side's grasp. He is held fast by his own clouded minds. Exit, Darth Vader. Oh, Ben. I call to thee, but wilt thou hear? I do remember thou didst say thou couldst not interfere in this, but oh, Ben, hear! Alas, my mentor's gone forever, and gives no answer, and deserted by the dead. If he cannot appear and rescue me, then I shall try the living. Leia, next, I call to thee. I prithee, Leia, hear! Enter Chewbacca, Princess Leia, and Lando, aside in the Millennium Falcon. Leia, aside. What is this voice that echoes in mine ears? Tis Luke, I know it is, yet... How is it that I do hear him when he is not nigh? No matter, more important is that I respond unto his call. To Lando. We must go back. What didst thou say? I know where Luke is. What about the fighters drawing near? I prithee, Chewie, Han would not... Han we cannot save, but may yet rescue Luke if we make haste. But what about the fighters, princess? Pray peace, good Wookiee, thou shalt have thy way. They approach Luke in the ship. Lando breaks off from the others to let Luke in. What ties most deep do bind these souls as one? In all my workings as a businessman, in all my deals and earning more, I have forgotten what doth make life rich. Tis friendship, love, and sacrifice that make a life. I, too long, have not lived well. Farewell, the former Lando, lonely man. Farewell to selfish pride and high ambition. Farewell to scoundrelhood and avarice. Farewell to all the things my life has been. From now, 
I shall the great rebellion serve, and join myself unto this band of friends, whate'er befall, pain, injury, or death. Lando opens the hatch. Luke drops from the weather vane into the ship. Now come, brave Luke, whose mates to thee are dear. Though I have not met thee, but do call thee brother. Give me your hand, good sir, if we be friends, and Lando shall, in time, restore amends. Good princess, let us fly, all is well. Oh, Luke, my heart doth swell to see thee safe. Thou hast been caught within Darth Vader's trap, but now thou art delivered and restored. Luke and Leia embrace, while Lando returns to the cockpit. Now go with me onto the cot and rest. In time we shall trade tales of grief and woe. The man is saved, but now the battle's on, for by TIE fighters our ship is pursued. The falcon is attacked, Luke. Lie thou back, I shall anon return to give thee aid. Leia goes to the cockpit. Behold, a star destroyer doth approach. Make ready, Chewie, for the light speed jump. Hi, if thy people fix the hyperdrive, coordinates are set, tis time we flew. Now make it so. The Millennium Falcon makes a sound and, wait for it, fails. I was told twas fixed. My trust I gave them to repair the ship. Some treachery and villainy lie here. Forgive me, I know not what hath transpired. Tis not my fault, in troth, tis not my fault. Enter Darth Vader and Admiral Piet on balcony. The ship shall be in tractor beam range before thou canst stay I. Thy trusty men disabled the swift Falcon's hyperdrive? They did, my lord. Tis well. Prepare to board their ship and set all weapons on to stun. They shall not have made escape for long, and soon Skywalker shall be in my hand again, and I shall bring him to the Emperor. <laughs> Indeed, my lord. I shall with joy comply. The rebels shall be in our grasp anon. Exit Admiral Piet, while Darth Vader stares into space. Enter C-3PO and R2-D2, who is repairing C-3PO. Why have we not to light speed flown? What dost thou mean that we cannot? How canst thou know the hyperdrive disabled is? The city's central processor hath told thee so? Oh, R2-D2, how oft I have warned thee of talking to a strange computer. Now attend to my repair. R2-D2 continues to repair C-3PO. Luke. Well, I know that thou canst sense my call. My father. Word most strange upon my lips. My son. Oh, Ben. Why didst thou tell me not? Luke walks to the cockpit. Chewbacca, we must fly or shall be destroyed. It is Darth Vader on that ship. We are in danger here. When shall we fly? Luke. Come with me. Fulfill thy destiny. Luke, aside. Oh, Ben, I ask. Why didst thou tell me not? What anguish and disorder fill my mind. R2-D2 goes to the control panel. R2-D2, aside. It falls to me again to win the day and rescue the rebellion from dire loss. I shall reactivate the hyperdrive. Thus we shall fly to fight another time. Oh, clever droid, great R2, rescuer! R2-D2 adjusts the control panel, and the Millennium Falcon flies into light speed. Exeunt all, but Darth Vader. Fine, fine. Yet once again the ship escapes. I shall devise brave punishments for those who put upon our state this grievous blight. Then shall I seek my son, the Jedi. Exit Darth Vader. Scene 4. Aboard a rebel cruiser. Enter Luke Skywalker. The medic droid hath fixed my hand with care, though never shall it fully be repaired. For though I can this hand use as before, it shall never truly be a hand of mine. For now I am machine, though partly so. 
now have I taken a step toward the man who saith he is my father, yet his wires and bolts. O oh, hand, I find thee yet so dear. Pray, serve me well, and pick my memory that I did once the dark side briefly know, and faced and fought and ultimately failed. Then rise once more with me, my true right hand, thy rightful place thou shalt take at my side to right the wrongs that we have suffered. And right now, though, thou and I begin to work toward righteousness in great rebellion's cause. Enter Chewbacca, Princess Leia, and Lando. Now, Lando, shalt thou go? I, Luke, for all hath been prepared. When we find Jabba and the bounty hunter, we shall tell thee all. I'll meet thee where we planned, on Tatooine, my homeland that is now estranged to me. Good princess, now farewell. Apologies, most earnest I convey again, and wish that with them a vow we shall find Han, I swear. Dear Chewie, I'll await thy signal. <laughs> now take thou care. The force be with ye both. They move to separate parts of the stage. Now ends this troubled time of Empire's rise, our time of harsh betrayal, painful loss. Now have we learned what friendship truly costs, and in the learning lost a comrade strong. Along the way our hearts were moved much, by, by sacred love most wondrous to behold by bravery that shall outlive the times, by sacrifice of our most precious friends. Encounters unexpected we did meet, with masters wise and persons unforeseen. These are the Star Wars, yet they are not done. For sure, the final chapter's just begun. A glooming peace this morning with it brings, no shine of starry light or planet's glow. For though our heroes scape the Empire's slings, the Great Rebellion ne'er has been so low. Brave Han is for the Empire's gain betrayed, which doth leave Princess Leia's heart full sore. Young Luke hath had his hand repaired, remade. The man is whole, but shaken to the core. Forgive us, gentles, for this brutal play, this tale of sorrow, strife, and deepest woes. Ye must leave empty, sighing like a day, till we, by George, a brighter play compose. Our story endeth, though your hearts do burn, and shall, until the Jedi doth return. Thank you for listening to our radio drama presentation of William Shakespeare's The Empire Striketh Back, Star Wars Part the Fifth by Ian Dosher. Luke Skywalker was played by Cam Griffin. Princess Leia was played by Mary Rivette. Han Solo was played by Corey Blouser. Darth Vader was played by Peter English. C-3PO was played by Roxy. Lando Calrissian was played by Sean Robert. Yoda was played by Mario Bueno. And now for the part of the credits longer than, than a Metallica intro, R2-D2, Admiral Ozzel, Dak, the Exogorth, Officer, Controllers, Durlin, Adat-1, Ugnot-1, and Guard-1 were played by Kaylee Rays. Chewbacca, Admiral Piet, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Emperor Palpatine, Zev, Soldier, Lieutenant, Hobby, Jansen, Adat-2, and Ugnot-2 were played by Joel Gutman. Boba Fett, Captain Nita, General Veers, General Riken, Wampa, Probe Droid, Bespin Droid, Bespin Figure, The Wampa, Adat 3, Ugnot 3, and Guard 2 were performed by Hayes Converse. Narration and the chorus were played by Taylor Starnes. Audio engineering for this production was done by John H. Baker. We are pleased to announce that our next production will be a radio drama adaptation of the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney film, which will be presented here on Saturday, September 19th at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. For more nerdy content, 
please follow Digital Era Entertainment here on Twitch. And you can listen to our past radio drama performances on Digital Era Entertainment's YouTube channel. Once again, thank you for tuning in. We hope you'll join us again next time. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us across social media for updates. Thanks for watching!